after having one week off. Tonight, our nation sports show returns, covering the latest news in the world of sports. Last week, news broke that the upcoming 2021 regular season schedule for the NFL was released. Tonight, we make our predictions for our favorite games for the upcoming season for the National Football League. Also, more news in the NFL as the Green Bay Packers saga with Aaron Rodgers continues as Green Bay signed former quarterback of the Jacksonville Jaguars, Blake Bortles. Is Aaron Rodgers' future with Green Bay in jeopardy? Will he leave Green Bay far behind? Is Blake Bortles the answer for Green Bay? We answer those questions as well. Also, coming up this week is the upcoming playoffs for the NHL and the NBA. Plus the latest news in the NFL, NBA, MLB, NHL, UFC, and so much more. The nation speaks to you next. From the gridiron to the court, talking all that is sports. Members of the Bucks of Nation bring to you our Nation Sports Show. Here are your hosts, John Blake, Jeff, Seth, Ben McDonald, Ezra, Vince, and Steve Wyatt. Welcome, everybody, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Children of all ages, uh, 18 and up, at least children of those ages. You are not seeing things. I am your lead host tonight, Kevin McDonald, or as you can tell, if you can see it on the Zoom, not John Blaine. Uh, John had to go and take tonight off um, and nothing bad, nothing personal. Um, he left it to us. Um, unfortunately, we are supposed to be live we got to go and pre-record this as, you know, technical difficulties of trying to go and pour from Zoom to YouTube can sometimes be, well, a bitch. Sometimes, so, but we are here. Yes, we are here and we're going to go and toss some sports. But first, let me go and introduce to you my uh, tag team partners in this uh, three-man tag team tonight, three-man booth tonight. We've got in the Midwest, Ezra, how you doing? All right, man. What's going on, everybody? Once again, another great week of sports. We are back, baby. We are back in black. Yeah. Yeah, I almost forgot. This was after a one week hiatus. Um, you know, so it's good to be back on the show, you know, like Ezra said. And now we go to the man uh, with the plan and a pretty cool set of shades there. We've got Steven down in North Carolina. Steven, what's, a, uh, what's up? How's it going? What's going on, man? Ooh, let's go talk some sports. Yeah. Ooh, let's go. All right. So first item of the day is going to be about the NBA playoffs. So since our last show, we now know uh, what the seedings are in the NBA playoffs, except for a couple of seedings, uh, namely the eight seeds in both the East and the West. Uh, as there was the play-in games, uh, in the last couple of nights, the Celtics and the Washington Wizards played on Tuesday, I want to say. Uh, I've had hockey and baseball in the brain like I do every day. 
Uh, so it's been a little tough to go and keep up with the NBA, but let's see. Let me go to the playoffs bracket for the NBA. Well, I know we got load. the Nets and the Celtics on Saturday. We got the Heat and the Bucks on Saturday as well. We got the Clippers. Who are they playing? Um, the Clippers are playing the Dallas Mavericks. Thank you. Um, so I got the bracket going on in the playing tournament. Like I said earlier, the Boston Celtics Tuesday night uh, defeated the Washington Wizards. They are the seventh seed playing Brooklyn, like Stephen just said. Tonight, the Indiana Pacers and the Washington Wither Wizards will go and battle to be the eight seed. Um, as what the play-in tournament was described as, the two teams that finished seven and eight in the standings in the conference, they will go and battle for the seven. The loser of that fights the fights, plays the winner of the nine ten matchup, and whoever wins that one would be the eight seed. Mm -hmm. So that's the Eastern Conference, um, Indiana Washington tonight at I believe eight o'clock. So according to our time, as we Waded through the waters of technical difficulties. It is 7.53 East Coast, so that's in about seven minutes that game starts. Over in the West, the 7-8 game last night was the LA Lakers defeating the Golden State Warriors, and the Golden State Warriors will face the Memphis Grizzlies, who defeated the San Antonio Spurs in the 9-10 game to be able to get to the second of the playing games. Uh, in terms of seeding, the Philadelphia 76ers finished the Eastern Conference as the number one seed, uh, followed by the Brooklyn Nets at number two. And while Milwaukee Bucks at number three, the New York Knicks, a surprise team at number four. Mm -hmm. Atlanta is number five. Miami Heat is number six. Of course, the Boston Celtics are number seven as uh, play-in tournament winners. And then the eighth seed will be determined later tonight, either Indiana or Washington over in the West. The Utah Jazz, number one seed, and they also are the number one uh, team in terms of victories this year. They were 52 and 20. Uh, number two is the Phoenix Suns at 51 and 21. That is shocking. Um, yes. Number three, the Denver Nuggets, 47 and 25. Another shocking, um, another shocking thing um, out west. Number four, the uh, L.A. Clippers, like I said, who are facing the Dallas Mavericks, uh, who are number five. Number six is the Portland Trailblazers. Number seven, of course, is the Lakers. And then either Golden State or Memphis will go round out at number eight, and they will play the Utah Jazz. So, do we have any comments about uh, the playing tournament or playoffs in general? Um, any surprises? Like, I know, Stephen, you just went and said about the Phoenix Suns and how they're a surprise. Yes, I mean Phoenix is a number is a huge surprise in the Western Conference, and Utah number one. Are you serious? And the fact that the defending champions, the Los Angeles Lakers, might not make it to the Western Conference Finals or the NBA Finals. I mean, they have had a really rough season this year, and they have had that championship, you know, kind of slope, kind of like how in the NFL does how. Whoever wins the Super Bowl usually 95% does not have a great season because they're they're you know having that hangover from you know having too much fun and winning the championship or and or if you're the loser, you know, having a hangover as well. But the the Lakers at number seven, the Jazz at number one, the Jazz at no, I'm sorry, uh, Jazz at number one, Suns number two, Nuggets number three, those are those are shockers. But the biggest shocker to me in the Eastern Conference playoffs bracket is the New York Knickerbockers. The fact that they are number four and they are playing as well as they have, have in the past several years of not having good seasons. So. Yep. And somebody on Twitter earlier today, I forget who went and said it, but they said that the New York Knicks are like the 17 year cicada cycle that we're currently going through right now in certain parts of the country. They're doing <laughs> yes. it every 17 yes. years. <laughs> um. <laughs> I sorry about the cough. I really wish John uh, was here for that one. I'd love to go see his face after uh, after I said something about his Knicks. Oh well, you can still see it. He'll watch this video later. Oh, I'm sure he's gonna watch this later. Hey, why aren't you guys live? Yeah, you should ask that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> this, this might turn into a bit of a, a rant. bash. 
<laughs> it's, it's, a rant, just like a little bit of a bashing. Nah, you I don't know. Hey, nah, hey, nah, shit, nah. hey, shit happens. It's yeah, okay. It, like Stephen said, shit happens, you know? It's okay. Excuse me. Sometimes you're just, you're dealt the hand where you're like, I really can't work with a high card, but I'm going to do my best. And yep. tonight is going to be that night. Yep. You never know. We could win with a high card. You never know. So, um, any other comments about the NBA playoffs? I mean, it's pretty straightforward. The difference between the NBA and the NHL playoffs, which we'll get into in a, in a few minutes if we're all set with the NBA. In, in the NBA, if you're the top seed in the games, you're guaranteed to win. You hardly ever go and see a lower seed to feed a higher seed. But here, here's an interesting question. So if the Los Angeles Lakers beat the Phoenix Suns in the Western Conference opening round, is that going to be considered a shocker? Or is that going to be, oh, it's not really a shocker because it's LeBron, because we know how LeBron is. When LeBron wants to turn it on, LeBron can be a pivotal threat to any team. But I don't, I don't think that LA this year is that team. Um, however, on the Eastern Conference, I think Brooklyn, if they can coexist, Yes, I just said it, folks. If they can coexist as a team and they don't turn heads on each other and say, oh, you should be doing this, you should be doing that. No, if Brooklyn can, if Brooklyn can play fine, Brooklyn will be fine in the long run because they have the star power with Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, and James Harden at, on the team. So I think Brooklyn is in pretty good shape. Philadelphia, it's kind of a, uh, kind of a hearsay, you know, she say, uh, you know, kind of ordeal with them because can they be great? Yes. But as far as in, the, in playoff years past, not so much because, I mean, well, they had that game against Toronto two years ago in that infamous game seven when uh, Leonard hit that ridiculous game winner. And they, they've had some close, they've had some close shots in the playoffs of Philadelphia. That, can they do it? Maybe. We'll see. Yeah, no, we'll definitely see if they can go and uh, get over the hump, especially for players like a Joel Embiid, who, if he was on the Celtics, I'm sure that the Celtics would be doing it. it would not be doing. They'd be in a much better position than they are now. Yeah. That's been one of my biggest surprises, and also as a, a Celtics fan, it's been a bit of a disappointment and a down year where you know you hear about potential selfishness or. You hear about the young guys not wanting to listen to the veterans, not wanting to listen to coaching and wanting to kind right. of, you know, get their money and get their stats, you know, pad their game. And I'm just thinking, you know, it, it should always be about the team, you know, and the team's needs. Yeah. Right. Um, and, 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 right. And, and to kind of, you know, what you're saying about the Celtics too, Jason Tatum, he's had a hell of a season for, for Boston. Three 50 plus point games since uh, April 1st. I mean, that's pretty good. And one of them was a 60. Mm -hmm. The guy is doing tremendous things for Boston, but unfortunately with basketball, it's not a one player sport. It is a, it is a team sport. And that is how a basketball team is going to win is by coexisting and being a team. And I think Boston, if they have the right pieces as far as playing at the right time and being hot at the right time, because at any given point in sports, hockey, football, especially those two sports, and baseball, you can get hot at the right time. Now, NBA, it has happened. I mean, Miami last year in the Eastern Conference shocked the living hell out of all of us sports fans by going to the NBA Finals and taking the Los Angeles Lakers to six games. No, that's right. You know, I, I will go and say that this, that basketball, or at least in the NBA now, it's definitely, you know, you still have the team that goes and wins, but it's definitely, you know, that if you have the superstar player like a LeBron James or a Steph Curry, um, a Kevin Durant, you're going to constantly be in the conversation, especially with, you know, clearing away. I, I will go and say, LeBron James is the best basketball player today. Yes. You know, and I, much... I, I don't think that's going to change anytime soon unless one of these new kids on the block that you see um, on some of these teams takes over. Oh, I love that reference. <laughs> um, that wasn't even a planned reference. I just said I, it and I came I out of my know. mouth like, it's, oh, wait. It, you said it. Woo, there it is. I mean, I mean, you know, be, I mean, it's a step by step process. Yes. <laughs> 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 and, and 
it's just it's one of those things. I mean, like, yes, in the NBA, when you have a player like a LeBron, like a Steph Curry, you know, like a Durant, you know, those guys, uh, Kawhi Leonard, you know, those players, they're guaranteed pretty much to do some amazing stuff with their teams. But obviously for years, it's always been those teams that had the superstars that was doing stuff like Chicago, like San Antonio, like the Lakers. You know, those teams, Miami, when LeBron was with them, Cleveland, when when he was with them, and also with the Golden State Warriors with that super-duper team with Steph and Clay and Draymond and Kevin. You know, mm-hmm. those teams doing all those – doing all that damage. And, you know, back in the 80s with the Lakers and the Celtics and the 90s, it was the, the Bulls, the Knicks and all those teams, the Rockets, you know, the Jazz, you know, doing their thing. And, and the NBA, I think now the NBA is starting to have – that unpredictability feel to its sport. And it hasn't had that in years. I mean, it's been, it's been ages since we've seen consecutive years when there's been not teams you're going to expect to do a great job, you know, by getting to the playoffs, because again, this uh, prefacing by saying this again, the Knicks are the biggest shocker right now in the NBA because they haven't done nothing in 20 plus years, especially in the last decade. They really made the playoffs a couple of times and that was it. Ezra, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, that's definitely my shocker pick, too, is New York. Um, I I was blown away when I saw the the overall stats of how the team is doing the season. Um, I expected any basically any other team in the Eastern Conference to be better than New York. Come on, their past history speaks for itself. Right. Same thing with the 76ers. You know, the 76ers, even when I first started watching NBA full-time, which is back in 2010 – around the time Derrick Rose was with Chicago with, you know, with that theme, with that famous bench mob. Um, mm-hmm. the, the Philadelphia 76ers at that time were a pretty trash team in a sense. They were always getting their ass handed to them. Now that Joel Embiid is starting to turn it on and they've got the right key players in the right positions, it seems like seeing good coaching, it seems like that the 76ers are making a run to be that team, that shocker team, that team to beat in the, in that division, but Indiana or not Indiana, New York is going to be right on, is going to be right in, in the mix, I feel, to really stake their claim as a true shocker team to make it to the next round of hell even further in the playoffs. It's just good. Like I said, it all depends on when that tip off first happens and that last basket makes it in. In between that time is when it really counts. Oh, definitely. Um, any other comments um, about the NBA playoffs? Anything in uh, Discord? Uh, anybody that wants to chime in? or uh, Yeah, anybody that wants to chime in on Discord, um, we are live on there. And uh, we also, we do have our own YouTube channel um, as well. Uh, go and search Our Nation Sports Show. We also have our Twitter handles. Um, let me go and pull those up real quick here i could learn it spell. here we go so on twitter we are at o n sports show our nation sports show on twitter go and hit that follow uh, especially on youtube we're going to be stumping for that one pretty hard um if we get to 100 subscribers we'll be able to go and get our own custom url and it'll be nice because then we won't have to say you know i'll go to youtube.com slash xz7-3428 E seven, hamana hamana hamana. You know, it'd be nice to just go and say youtube.com slash our nation sports show. It's um, it's YouTube a dash b dash b dash your sister's ass, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah something like that. Exactly. I, I don't even know what that actually is. So, any other comments about the NBA playoffs from um, either of you guys? I think we're good. Let's go, sir. Okay. So, then if that's the case. We'll move on to the wonderful world of the NHL, where their playoffs have already started up. And, oh, it's been a doozy. I currently, on my glorious 50-inch TV, have the Florida Panthers at Tampa Bay Lightning game on. And Suck, suck an egg. Um, oh, did I say that? Sorry. <laughs> oh, did you say that one out loud? Suck an egg, bud. <laughs> so, suck Florida. an egg, bud. Florida has currently tied the game up at 3-3. Um, Florida, two goals. Uh, they were up 2 nothing going into the first period. Um, at least that's where I, I last saw the score in the first period. 
And then Tampa ripped off three goals in a row before Florida just tied it up. Uh, Tampa Bay leads that series two games to nothing. Currently, um, there is one set of games that have just started. A lot of the other, a lot of all the American teams have all started. Um, up in Canada, the way that the uh, divisions align this year for the NHL, all the Canadian teams are in their own division. It's called the North. Um, and I believe it was the Scotiabank North because the NHL decided to do um, sponsorships for all their divisions this year. So in the Scotiabank North, you had all the Canadian teams. Their playoff series all started late because the Vancouver Canucks about a month and a half ago got hit hard by COVID-19. They missed about two and a half weeks worth of games. They just finished up their season finale the other night. Um, so those two series, you have the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Montreal Canadiens in one series. And then last night, the Winnipeg Jets, uh, yes, the Winnipeg Jets and the Edmonton Oilers, they started out their series. Winnipeg leads that series one nothing, um, And Toronto starts their series tonight. In the Western Division, you have the Colorado Avalanche leading the St. Louis Blues by a uh, two games to nothing lead. And then the Vegas Golden Knights and Minnesota Wild are tied up um, at a game apiece. In the East, you have the Pittsburgh Penguins, New York Islanders who are playing currently. They are tied up at one game apiece. And the Boston Bruins are currently got a two games to one lead over the Washington Capitals. All three games have been in overtime. Um, an interesting factoid from this weekend, the playoffs started last week on Friday, I believe. Yes, they started last week on Friday with Boston Bruins, the Washington Capitals. The game goes to overtime. Sorry, not Friday, Saturday. My mistake. So Saturday, Bruins Capitals, they start the, um, the playoffs off. Capitals win in overtime. Sunday, second game of the playoffs to start. Pittsburgh Penguins and the New York Islanders. The Islanders win that game in overtime. There has never been, until this season, three games to start the Stanley Cup playoffs go to overtime. Because the Vegas Golden Knights and Minnesota Wild, in an absolute fantastic goalie matchup, they went to overtime. Third straight. And then Tampa and Florida flirted with it, but at a minute 14, Tampa scored the go-ahead goal to go and win the game against Florida. Uh, yeah, against Florida. Real quick, I, I, I know on the yes. Discord the other day you were talking about that because I, I was looking at the uh, the Crossing Fandoms channel and you mm -hmm. were just going nuts in there, you know, with the, with these games. Like You're like, oh, man, we're close to having another overtime game. And I was like, ah, yeah, you know, it's, it, you know, it's, it did happen. But, man, you, uh, also you were going just crazy with, with, with your Bruins, of course, winning that game three to two. So I'll tell you from experience, like, Obviously, my number one love is, without a doubt, football. Um, but baseball and hockey, it's almost like a 1A, 1B, 1C. But when it comes to the Stanley Cup playoffs, like, there is nothing better. There really is nothing better. It, everybody says that the NFL is the best playoff run because it's a win, and you move on, lose, and you go home. And these playoff series, oh, you, you play too many times. It's like, yeah, but you know what? There's more drama to it. There's a ton of drama in watching the NFL playoffs because it's lose and go home. It's lose and play golf. Right, but right. But when it, when it comes to the NHL playoffs, it's more than just lose and go home. It's you lose game two or you lose game three and now you're down two games to one. You're done. It, it, almost, it almost feels like you're done. I will not ever go and say that you're counted out because in 2010, the Philadelphia Flyers were down 0-3 to yep. uh, the Boston Bruins, and then yep. the Flyers did a reverse sweep of the Bruins. I still yep. have a sour taste in my mouth because of that. And also with the sour taste in your mouth as well, expanding upon that, sorry there, Kev, you mm -hmm. got to experience that in the Stanley Cup Finals Twice. with the Chicago Blacks, uh, Blackhawks. Yep. Chicago Blackhawks. And again, I still remember that night fondly. I was working at a uh, company called A.W. Chesterton. Uh, I was a cleaner over there. And when Chicago scored the two goals to uh, go up in the series, 
and win the series as a whole. I was beside myself listening to that. I looked so dejected, and the lead uh, cleaner we had, Linda Parker, goes and looks at me, and it's just like, Kev, what, what's wrong? What's wrong? What, what happened? I'm like, leaning up against the bathroom cart. Yeah. So, the Bruin had a one-goal lead, and now the Chicago Blackhawks are raising the cup. And I you're was right. A mixture of sad and happy because Chicago Blackhawks in 2010 faced the Philadelphia Flyers in the Stanley Cup final and started rooting for the Blackhawks. And then I actually started to like the team. So I was happy. Blackhawks won. The secondary team I have won the cup. But I was more sad because it's not my team. Not two and three years. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That also was a seven game series because game one went to three overtimes. Mm -hmm. That was ridiculous. Um, But like I was saying, there's nothing better than playoff hockey. There's so much drama. There's so much excitement. I mean, you know, you're looking at the games here. You're also the other really cool thing about the NHL playoffs. Like I said earlier with the NBA, most of the time, like nine times out of ten, you have the one seed beat the eighth, two beat the seven, three beat the six, the four and the five trade off. In the mm-hmm. NHL, the eight very easily can beat the one. Like, for instance, you, you just brought that up. Look at St. Louis a couple of years ago. They yep. were the most shocking team in the playoffs, knocking out Tampa Bay. <laughs> Are you kidding me? So, I mean, you know, uh, St. Louis, they faced the Boston Bruins um, two years ago in the Cup. That year, in January, they were a few points from the bottom of the league. And they were able to go and just win. They, they rode on the hot hand. I was saying this earlier. You ride the hot hand. They were riding on the hot hand of Jordan Bennington, uh, their goalie. And it just he's, – he's making saves that a veteran makes. And it's like, wow, this is a rookie. How is this happening? Um, you know, and, yeah, there was a couple of moments with the Bruins, with like with uh, David Pasternak. I'm sorry, but, hmm. like – We've seen in the playoffs as Bruins fans for way too long that when he's in a physical matchup, like with the Washington Capitals being a bigger, stronger physical team, he turtles, disappears, doesn't show up on the score sheet at all. He's a finesse player, you know, pond hockey style where you're all just loosey-goosey flying around in the middle of the ice scoring at will. Pasternak is great at that. You know, the, the game out Lake Tahoe against the Philadelphia Flyers, he was an absolute menace. But mm-hmm. when it comes to... The physical style game that Washington or St. Louis Blues um, or a Tampa Bay Lightning at times go and play. Pasternak goes and turtles. But that's not the point of this conversation. The point of this conversation is the NHL playoffs are the best playoffs out there. Yes. A uh, quick uh, quick score update. Uh, yes. Tampa Bay right now is leading 4-3. Uh, the Braden Point scored a power play goal. <laughs> there was a five on four power play and he was able to get it through. So Tampa Bay's up right now with the time currently being 341 left in the second. Oh yeah. Nice. Now uh, right, right now it's a pretty close battle um as far as uh shots on goal in, in both periods. Uh Tampa uh Florida currently leads both both uh times 12 10 and 13 11 right now with a total of 25 over to 21 over uh over Tampa Bay Lightning right now on shots like gold. So, and right. uh, just to do a quick score update while we're uh, at it with the Florida Tampa Bay game, the Islanders are on the power play, um, and the Pittsburgh Penguins are leading one nothing in the second period. The Montreal Canadiens are currently leading one nothing over the Toronto Maple Leafs, and I, I hate the Canadiens with a burning passion, but nothing will make me happier knowing the Canadiens once again kept Toronto from advancing past the first round of the playoffs. <laughs> Nothing will me like I love it when Montreal loses because it's Montreal. No, 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 no. It's Kevin. the Rouge Blanc on Black. Not, but not just that, not just this game, but, but makes but, me happier than Toronto losing the like not making it past the first round of the playoffs. Nothing makes me happier. I was gonna say that too, Kevin. It's not just Montreal. You can't stand all Canadian teams, so you want all Canadian teams to lose and get burnt in the playoffs. I don't like. I just don't like the Canucks because they had Hoffy Torres, and I still want to. I still want to do horrible things to him. 
Well, yeah, no, I, I remember those years of watching Rocky Torres and going, so when is he just going to get clapped? He's going to get clapped here. What he did to Mary and Hosa in the playoffs. Oh. Still makes my blood boil. Oh, yeah. I mean, I still go and get the, uh, I still go and get goosebumps whenever I go and see the hit from Matt Cook on Mark Savard. And that was all the way back in 2010. So we're talking 11 years uh, from that hit. I still go and get like shivers when I go and see that because it just was so horrible to hit. It should be uh, a stipulation in the Toronto Montreal series. It should be like what's going to happen this weekend at double or nothing with the inner circle and uh, next weekend or next weekend, or next weekend pinnacle yeah. the inner circle stay as they beat where inner circle has to break up. If Montreal loses, they have to become the Nordique again. <laughs> wow. They have to they have to get rid of they have to get rid of the Canadians and bring back the Nordiques. Wow. <laughs> so if Toronto loses, I think we can finally just be like, can we bring in, you know, relegation like they have over in the British Premier League? <laughs> you brought you sucked for way too long. Let's go and put you down to the AHL and promote your farm team. How about that? They play Toronto, the Toronto fans and Montreal fans have tried so hard to 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 say that all oh, our team is great da, 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 and they constantly get failure with either team it's like the cowboy it's like the cowboys right <laughs> it's only if you watch this i am not sorry and it's also you in the nhl you don't need to be sorry if you're uh, gonna rag on the cowboys and it's also, uh, even though they've had success over the years, but what has Detroit done for the NHL in years? They haven't done nothing in years. Get their asses whipped by the Blackhawks. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, right. pretty, that's pretty much all it is. And just as we're talking about that, Tampa just scored another goal. It's now five to three. Oh, for wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. Hmm. Well, yes. I mean, you know, I would like to go and say um, Nikita Kucherev and Steven Stamkos – miraculously being able to come back to play for the playoffs smells a lot like cap circumvention Mm -hmm. because Tampa Bay, it was severely up against the cap. And those two guys all of a sudden are down with injuries and now they're able to come back to play. Mm -hmm. Sounds a little fishy here. That was a little fishy. I don't like it, (laughs) but you know, the NHL clearly, you know, likes Tampa Bay. I mean, who got like that? That is just a supremely talented bunch. Um, one team that has surprised me since they were in the Eastern Conference Finals a couple of years ago with the Boston Bruins, the Carolina Hurricanes. Mm-hmm. Um, Steven, I, I don't know how close you are to Raleigh uh, to be able to go and watch them, but about an hour and a half. Yep. Hey, yeah. my cousin, my cousin is a die-hard fan. No, it, uh, I've always, and of course, it was a little bit of a local history to me. They were the Hartford Whalers before they moved down to Carolina, uh, to North Carolina in 1997. Uh, they were always known, at least to me and my family, as the Bruins punching bag. Oh, I just saw lights. No, nope, no goal. Never mind. It's TV. That takes up a lot of room. <laughs> the the playoffs are very it seems like it's a very competitive playoffs this year it re- really really does there's a lot of good matchups to say the least i mean oh definitely definitely this tampa bay florida one even though tampa bay is leading to nothing it's scoring pretty heavy already i feel like that the, if florida could come back i feel like it could be very very it could be a very strong competitive series we're already seeing that with pittsburgh and new york with them tied already um, and Vegas and uh, Minnesota, so I, I'm excited for I'm excited for the NHL playoffs, and I'm excited to see which teams are going to make it forward, um, mm. and, and who's going to end up in the finals. Yeah, I'm I'm incredibly excited, and especially with the finals because we're all used to Eastern Conference versus Western Conference, and this year it is not going to be that. Right. Because the way that on NHL.com on their Stanley Cup bracket, the way that it shakes out. The East and I believe uh, they're, oh, I forget the name of the division that Tampa Bay and Carolina are in. But those two, the winner collectively of those games, because they the 
division, the top four in each division will play against each other in the seeding, one, four, two, three. Whoever wins those two series play each other. Whoever wins that series goes and plays the winner of the other series in the other divisions. So there's a chance of having, this would be a hell freezes over moment, but a Boston Bruins, Montreal Canadiens, Stanley Cup final. Think about that, folks. We're so used to Boston, St. Louis, East versus West, you know, uh, New Jersey Devils versus the LA Kings, um, the Tampa Bay Lightning versus the Dallas Stars, that we could potentially, just because of the division realignment due to COVID, we could potentially have Boston Bruins versus the Montreal Canadiens in the Stanley Cup final. You want to talk about money? You want to talk about ratings? Every original six hockey fan in the world will tune in for that. Oh, absolutely. And because it'll be the first time that those two teams have really played each other in a year plus, there's going to be a lot lot of fun with that series. And because of the rivalry with them, I expect immensely for that to... uh, Pretty much kick off where it uh where it all left off. That will work for me. Uh, so, any comments on Discord uh, regarding the NHL playoffs? Uh, no comments yet, but I will say this much: um, I was in conversations just a few minutes ago with a, with a certain friend of ours. Uh, and depending on what time the show runs tonight, he may pop in and make an appearance. So, real quick, real quick Kevin, the, the... They play, uh, Carolina plays in the Central Division. Central Division. Okay, thank you, Stephen. I couldn't remember. I know it was the West, the North, the East. I couldn't remember what the other one was, but the Central. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah. So, but that could be a really interesting Stanley Cup final to be able yes. to go and have like two Eastern Conference teams or even two Western Conference teams because in the Central you have the Nashville Predators who are technically in the Western Conference, mm-hmm. and they could go and play the Minnesota Wild in the Stanley Cup final. While I love the city of Nashville, the Predators can go take a leap of faith, okay? <laughs> Once again, being a Blackhawks fan. Yep. Oh, I, I get you. I get you. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, look, I I would hate to have it be Pittsburgh. Like, if the Bruins make it to the next round and Pittsburgh mm. also makes it to the next round, I would hate that because it's like, oh, boy, here we go. Two fandoms that think they're the real black and gold and i mean let's face it the boston Bruins are the real black and gold we did it first um i i don't know that that one will be tough because at the beginning of the season there, there's rumors of Sidney crosby coming like wanting to be traded or not wanting to be traded or the upper brass wanting to trade him or asking if he wanted to be traded. and now they're in the playoffs and they're still apparently doing really, really well it doesn't bode well Yes. It is a tie so, game currently, um, Pittsburgh and the Islanders. So the NHL is doing this playoffs thing this year, which is very interesting. So do you guys think that the NBA should do the same thing? Because it would make things a little bit more interesting instead of the same old, same old BS. I mean, I, I mean, I don't mind East versus West, you know, whatever seed makes out. But it would be interesting to see a two Eastern Conference teams or two Western Conference teams make it to the NBA Finals. I, I think this might just be like a one year anomaly just because of all the COVID uh, stuff that's been going on, but it so. wouldn't be a bad thing to have. Um, I, yeah, I think, I think, it, I think it's just a one year thing just to test the waters and make sure because of with this, because they've had to readjust so much because of the pandemic. So with that being said, I mean, I, I would like to see that personally, that type of, uh, that type of division set up with the NBA, but I think they're the type that won't step on tradition in a sense with this outside of what they did last year in the short season. Um, I feel like they're, they're going to keep the same tradition of East versus West, you know, in those certain teams. I don't feel like they're going to change unless it, it's drastically needed. No. And, and I, now the NFL doesn't need to do that because the NFL is already unpredictable to begin with. 
But if mm-hmm. the NBA wants to spice the little things up, you know, get that shit stirred in the pot, you know, a little bit, you know, stir it up, you know, change it up a little bit, you know, try to make it a little spicy, a little hot, you know, they need to try something different because it's getting old seeing from the majority, the number one seed, the number one seed, the number one, number two, number one, number three, you know, the top four seeds. But if you can get a number one, a number seven, a number three, a number five, a number two, a number eight, Whatever, whatever can happen. If that can happen, that would be cool. No, it, it, it definitely would. It definitely, with, with the NBA, like I said earlier, not to beat this dead horse, but like I said, you hardly ever go and see the lower seed beat the higher seed. Um, I would love to be able to see, like, let I'll use this as, a, as an example, the Brooklyn Nets, the Boston Celtics this year. Sure. The Nets of the two, the Celtics of the seven. I, I would love for it to go and be that the Celtics of the seven seed beat the two seed Brooklyn Nets. Because it would go and show that maybe there can be this unpredictability, that maybe you can go and have the hot team versus the top team wins. You know, yep. it just it makes it very predictable. It makes it kind of blah. Yeah, exactly. As I was talking, Pittsburgh just scored. It's now two to one, uh, Pittsburgh over the Islanders. All right. Yeah. Definitely, like I said, uh, but... definitely rub that in John's face. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like, like I said, Kevin, keep an eye on that waiting room over the next hour, hour and a half, because we may have a special guest join us. Oh, all right. Yeah. No, I will definitely go and keep uh, keep an eye on it, uh, as it is I, not John Blaine, <laughs> coming at you here tonight. Yeah, no problem, not John Blaine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so what's next on the uh, good old docket there, sir? Well, next on the um, docket um, is the meaning of life. No, no. no wait, time no. out, time out, time out. Not time the meaning out. of life. Sorry, it's not time the out. meaning of life. Time out. I thought, I, thought we were, I thought we were a sports show, not Miss Cleo's predictions. <laughs> oh, no, I wasn't going to be predicting anything. I was just going to say, you know, that the meaning of life, you know, the, the answer to, to life, liberty, everything is 42. Oh, you guys never watched Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, did you? Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> you guys have never seen Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? Pre-recorded or live, we go off the rails. Oh, man. <laughs> if I did watch it, it, it might have been when it first came out. And then I've watched Y'all so many homework. Movies. Y'all got homework. <laughs> all right. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah. I break out, like, one of my funnier references. For all I my know, friends, but... they'll know why it's one of the funnier references. And uh, <laughs> I, I, yeah, no, this show has kind of gone Sorry. away from us a little bit in the last 45 minutes. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, no, it's okay. So, yeah, yeah, speaking, yeah, speaking, speaking of, uh, ster- speaking of losing, uh, con- losing concentration. What do you call chicken staring at a bowl of lettuce? Chicken sees a salad. <laughs> All right. That's, almost, that's, that's just about as bad as uh, the old Jeff Foxworthy joke. You, might you be stared ready. at a partner of orange juice because it says concentrate. You Ouch. might be a redneck. Yep. I know. Next. All right. Back to the sports. Back to the sports stuff now that we're going to try to rein it in here. Um, let's go and talk about the NFL. Let's go. Let's go and talk about that. And I want to go and talk about one brief thing with the Aaron Rodgers drama. Is that he's really got no leg to stand on in this? None. He's he's got nothing. He's got no basis does, of being able to do anything. Neither does RG three in the NFL. Period. Wow. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> I mean, that's not a terrible one, but it's also not wrong. So, with, with, 
Oh, this show. Ugh. Started off not being able to go live. We have to complain about that for 45 minutes, and then we finally like, all right, just go and record this. Put it up later. Uh, Shit happens. Yeah, Anyways. No, it does. But hey, this is almost like a podcast at this point instead of a live uh, YouTube show. So, you know, kind of have a little bit of leeway here. It, 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 it happens. Yeah. Uh, but no, with Aaron Rodgers, if you um, were living under a rock or just really don't care oh, about yes. quarterback drama in the offseason, um, Aaron Rodgers, uh, the night of the uh, first round of the NFL draft, goes and tells the Green Bay Packers he no longer wants to be on the Packers team. I want to be traded now. Or if you don't trade me, I'll retire. That's the only leg he's got is that he could just retire. And that's really not the greatest leg because it means you're going to walk away from the game. And the only way that you can come back is if you go back to the Green Bay Packers because he's still under contract for at least a season or two. Um, he hasn't been moved yet. Green Bay is, sol- is solid on their stance that they are not going to move him whatsoever. So, gentlemen, Stephen, Ezra, whichever one uh, wants to go and start this off. What do you think? Do you think uh, Aaron Rodgers has played his last down um, in the NFL, or do you think that he will still be number twelve for the Green Bay Packers? I'm going to take a knee for I'm going to make a, take a knee for this and let him go. Let the let the let the bear fan go. Okay. 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 Well, I hope Aaron Rodgers ever see him again. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'll let you go first. Are you sure? Yes. Are you kidding? Uh, we'll talk about that off air. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've, I've caused I've, I've probably caused enough problems this week so let's just leave it at that but um it's uh what it is um Aaron to me I as a Green Bay as a player I think that he has only because he's not getting what he wants and that is an extension on his contract they want to restructure his contract so that way they're able to sign more players and, you know, all the signs are, are being shown to us by the signings of backup quarterbacks galore. They just signed Blake Bortles. What does that tell you? You know, what does that I mean, I know they're prepping practice squads and everything for preseason and getting everybody a chance to show what they got. I get that. But if you look at that, the writing is clearly on the wall. Aaron, I think Aaron's going to go. I think Aaron's not going to stick around. He's tired of management. He's tired of not – of decisions – being made without him having even the smallest bit of consent. That was, that's the problem with the whole Matt LaFleur situation. When he got hired, Roger specifically said that he didn't want him and that when they hired him, they did not give him, they didn't tell him anything or give him a chance to put his two cents in. And, and what, and what, that's, Ezra, what, that's what, that's what rubbed him the wrong way to begin with. And what Ezra's talking about also, which leads into this point as well. In the NFC Championship game, I have brought this up not once but twice. The fact that Matt LaFleur does not go for it on fourth and go from the eight-yard line by letting his quarterback do his thing. I bet you Aaron Rodgers wanted to go for it, but at the same time, he knew that he was not the one pulling the strings because Matt LaFleur was the head coach and he had all final say. If that would have been me, I would have been said, you know what, screw you, the hell with you. I'm Aaron Rodgers. I've won the Super Bowl. I've won multiple MVPs and all this stuff. I won a Super Bowl MVP. Nah, I'm calling the damn play whether you like it or not because I'm Aaron Rodgers. I'm doing whatever the fuck I want. You, You can't. You got to you got to stand up, and even though your coach might be wrong, you have to say to your coach, "All right, buddy, I know I know you're trying to call the right play for the team, but we are right here at the end zone. If I can get a touchdown here, the game is almost tied. We're down by two, and we have an opportunity to go for two and tie the game. But no, that didn't happen because Matt Lafour could not think with his head, and he and he just made an ass out of himself." So I could see why Rodgers would want to leave, but at the same time, come on, dude, you you didn't get your way with McCarthy. You're not getting your way with with uh, with Lafleur. The fact that he is complaining again, it just goes to show you if he is not the star and basically the general manager of this freaking team, then 
Nothing is going to be satisfying him to, to, to begin with. And the fact that every Green Bay quarterback that's been a major star in the NFL has not played past 16 seasons. Very, very good. That's a point that you pointed out a couple weeks ago when we were talking about yep. you went on your rant about yep. the Rodgers situation. Yep. Yes, Aaron's not getting his way. But I understand why the team wants to restructure the contract. They want to open up the salary cap to allow them to sign more players. And I get that. Aaron wants an extension because he believes he's owed one because of his years of service to Green Bay. But you got to think in a sense, what Green Bay has had good records and come close. But to me, I feel like that, you know, this bad coming from me being biased, but to me, Aaron Rodgers, despite how good he is, it's a season by season case. It's not overall performance. It doesn't matter if you were the first half of your career, you were throwing, you were breaking records and winning Super Bowls, but the other half of the career, you freaking sucked. If you're not, if you're not, do, if one season, two seasons, you're not getting the job done. They're not going to, they're not going to give you what you want. They're not going to give you an extension. And, and what Green Bay wants to do is Green Bay. That's what management is there to do. They're there to make the decisions. It's the same thing with LeBron James trying to control. seems like he's trying to control whatever team he's a part of, whether it's Cleveland, Miami, or LA. It's a very similar situation where they believe, oh my God, I have, I'm this big, Big shot. I have this much pool. I can do whatever I want. I have say this, this, and this on the management side of things. You have, you can put your word in, but then again, your word may mean nothing in a, in the end of it, because you're not the one who's going to be paying that person's paycheck at the end of the day. It's management that's going to make that decision. Your your input, your voice, could maybe sway a little bit, but if the owner says no, we want this guy because this, and not because of what. LeBron said or Aaron said, that's what it's gonna it's gonna be what makes the most sense to them, not to you. So um we do have a comment from uh Discord real quick. This is from our uh Ryan M, who of course one of our good buddies on here. He says he feels like that Aaron will be trade will will be traded. Uh to me, that's kind of gonna be a hard sell only because the team has said multiple times that they will not trade Aaron away. I, I really don't think that um, Aaron Rodgers is going to be graded at all. I think he, he's going to retire or he's going to keep playing for the Green Bay Packers because he's going to, he's going to realize that, you know, look, I, I'm in the best position, you know? Yeah. This was a bit of an F you to go and do it on draft night when you have, you know, the first night of the draft, you know, that you have no shot at getting a quarterback of the future. Um, even though the draft of Jordan loved the previous year, um, but I like to think that the Packers saying, no, we won't trade you and drafting a cornerback in the first round instead of offensive help on the line or receiver was kind of the F you back to, uh, to Rogers. Right. And, you know, like you guys were saying, especially like you were saying, Ezra, why would you give this guy full say so with the team when you're not the owner of the team, you're not the one picking the players. The owner is the one picking the players. It's not up to the quarterback who goes to the team. Now, the quarterback, like you said, can have or a star player in any sport, shit, for that matter. You know, like LeBron, like when Kobe was playing, back when Jordan played, back when Tim Duncan played, Shaq played, you know, uh, uh, Jeter played. You know, all these great players across every sport, Peyton, Brady, et cetera, these guys – had some influences, but they were not the final say with the team. They could say, hey, get this guy. Get this guy. He could be a great asset to the team. The owner was the one that said, this is who we're getting, whether you like it or not, basically. And I never saw any of those star players really complain about who their team gets. They just dealt with it. I mean, Tom Brady has had a hell of a career in his 20 years plus as a star quarterback. He's won seven Super Bowls. He's had receivers that have been great on any team that he's been on. And he's had some receivers that haven't been great. He deal, he deals what he's dealt with. And Aaron Rodgers, to me, can do that. It's just that he has to have the mindset that I'm going to be dealt whatever hand that I'm dealt with, and I'm going to make it work the best way I know how to do it. And it definitely kind of screams that he's maybe a bit of a prima donna. Um, and with you mentioning Brady, it's funny how that guy's been around since the year 2000 when he was drafted and 
round six, pick 199. You all know that story that he was passed over 198 times before the Patriots took him. Um, but you can go ahead and break his career. Tom Brady's up in the three parts, and it's three different Hall of Fame resumes. How absurd is that? Aaron Rodgers is definitely going to be in the Hall of Fame one day, but you can't break his career up into three different distinct parts like right. Brady's and say all three are Hall of Fame worthy. I mean, from 2000 to 2006, three-time Super Bowl champion, two-time Super Bowl MVP. Um, at the yards touchdowns off the top of my head, I don't know. Based off of that, that's a Hall of Famer. But then 2007 to 2014, Having all those stats, especially in 2007, having 50 touchdowns, having almost 5,000 passing yards, having f- hitting 5,000 passing yards once in his career. And then from 2015, where he won uh, four Super Bowls. And yes. the best part to the four Super Bowls is that he went to a new team at Tampa Bay. And he not only won the Super Bowl, he did it in his first crack with the team it wasn't like you know he was there for a couple of years and then they finally got over the hump he got over that hump in the first go that's insane and the fact that they were that we were all talking about brady oh this season is not a success with with the buccaneers they were doing so half good and half poorly at times and then man when they when they got hot and i honestly let, let me ask you guys this Do you think the turning point for Tampa Bay was that game against Kansas City? Because Kansas City was beating the hell out of Tampa Bay for the first couple of quarters with Tyreek Hill having all those touchdowns and already having 200-plus yards within the first half of the game. In the first quarter. In the first quarter, exactly. And and, and, and it's like like when he – it's like Tampa Bay was like, okay, we're not doing great right now, but let's pull it together. Let's see how we do. And they got to within a touchdown. And it was crazy how, how close they got to the game. And they could have won the game. But mm-hmm. I think that was the turning point for Tampa Bay season uh, against Kansas City. Oh, most definitely. Because that's uh, the season kind of, I think that was the fifth loss, fourth or fifth loss at that point. So mm-hmm. they finished the year 11 and five. And th- that team definitely got hot down the stretch, but they were a number five wildcard team. And you had, obviously, the Washington football team being the division winner of the NFC East. Everybody knew they weren't going to make any noise. No. But you had the, uh, if I remember correctly, the Green Bay Packers, uh, one in the north. Yep. Um, In the south, it was New Orleans Saints who had beaten Tampa Bay twice in the regular season. Yep. And then out west, if I'm not mistaken, it was the – Yeah. Seattle. Okay, Seattle won. But Brady beat the Washington football team on the road. He then traveled to New Orleans and bested Drew Brees and what ended up being his final game in the NFL. Yep. And then he went into Lambeau Field and beat Aaron Rodgers. And then on home turf, Beat Patrick Mahomes and won yep. Super Bowl, what was that, 55? 55. 55. Um, the Super Bowl's been around for so long that we all forget the numbers. Yeah, and it's like it's like picking it back to Rodgers. I mean, Rodgers has had a great career with Green Bay. He's won a Super Bowl. He's been, he's been in, in multiple championship games, but he hasn't gotten past the hump because of the teams that he's been surrounded by. And the one team, the one game he should have won in the NFC Championship game was 2015. It was back up tight and could catch the freaking ball on the onside kick and the game would have been over. I no. remember that. I remember and, that. I was like, what? What is going on? So for Rodgers to be complaining and whining like a little diva that he really is acting like right now, he needs to stop this. Because all he is doing is damaging his reputation as a player and as a star athlete within the NFL. And to answer this, to ask you you this, how do you think Green Bay is going to do even if Rodgers returns? Because there could be a lot of turmoil within this organization because this regular season is shaping up to be pretty crazy, especially with, with some of the matches that we got coming up this season. 
Well, it's a good thing you went and said that because I did want to go and do a quick turn or not a quick, but I wanted to go and do a transition into the NFL schedule that released last uh, Wednesday. Um, so I have up uh, the schedule for week one. Uh, the Green Bay Packers are traveling to New Orleans to go and play the Saints. Uh, that's a game on mm. Fox. It's the first game without Drew Brees. So that'll be a very interesting uh, test to go and see. Is it Taysom Hill? Is it Jameis Winston? Is it somebody we don't know the name? Is who will be the quarterback for the Saints going forward? And Taysom Hill is not the answer, and neither is Jameis Winston. I mean, Winston, no. my God, that guy in Tampa Bay had 30-plus touchdowns and 30-plus interceptions. He, what all he's do you... uh, in baseball, a 30-30 man, you know, 30 home runs, stolen bases. You don't want to be a 30-30 man as an NFL quarterback because no. that's 30 touchdowns, 30 picks. Not a good idea. You can't do that. I mean, it's just – it's egregious. I mean – Everybody was like, well, if he, would if he would tone it down, the turnovers, he would be okay. Dude, you can't have 30-plus uh, interceptions like that. That is terrible. Hmm. You know, but let's uh, – let's first, let's go and uh, work our way through the week one schedule. We're not going to go and do all 17 games of, of schedules for each team. Um, I'm just going to go and pick some of the bigger matchups throughout the week's uh, to kind of go and discuss. This might end up being one of our longer segments tonight. Um, I don't even know how long we've been recording. But uh, I think we've been recording start... for about an hour. All right, well, that's not too bad. Yeah, a little, maybe close to a little bit over an hour. So we're in good shape. Yeah, yeah no, we're good. that's pretty good. Pretty good for a non live episode. So, first game of the year, the Cowboys are going to travel to Tampa Bay. That's a big game because it's raising a banner for Tampa Bay, for Tom yep. Brady, yep. Um, defending Super Bowl champs. It's also a big game because it's Dak Prescott's hopefully first game back from that horrific compound ankle fracture that he suffered mm -hmm. against the Giants in week four or five last year. Um, that's definitely a big game. Um, definitely one that I'm very interested in watching, um, especially because I get to go and see Tom Brady uh, go and hoist um the banner up not himself so that would be really cool if he was like unveiling the banner and then he ran down to the field um just you know once again it'd be super tom um another game of note the jacksonville jaguars go into houston um there's still some turmoil when it comes to sean watson over uh what's transpired with him this offseason uh, but that's also of note because it's trevor lawrence's first game as an nfl quarterback and yep. With the news today that the Jacksonville Jaguars did officially sign Tim Tebow uh, to be a tight end, maybe Tebow makes a roster and makes waves as a tight end. Who knows? Yeah, no, who knows? Uh, th this NFL season is shaping up to be incredibly unpredictable. I'll tell you a matchup I'm also looking forward to with this season is Brady with the Bucks going up against the Patriots. Ah, we'll get to <laughs> that one. We'll get to that one. Don't mm -hmm. you worry. We will get to that one. Um, in the week one matchups, another one, um, another few that are pretty big games, uh, the Jets at the Carolina Panthers. Um, it is hopefully Sam Darnold, the starting quarterback for Carolina, facing against his old team, and Zach Wilson getting his first start um, as well, hopefully. Uh, so that might be the first prove-it game of the season. Uh, with Sam Darnold showing the Jets what they could have had. Yep. Or it could be Zach Wilson showing Sam Darnold what a true quarterback looks like. Again, you never know. Um, you get a couple of playoff match uh, rematches, the Steelers and the Buffalo Bills, and then the Cleveland Browns, the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, and then the Monday Night Football matchup is the Baltimore Ravens at the L.A. Raiders. L.A. Raiders. Oh, wow, that was bad. The Las Vegas Raiders. At least I didn't say Oakland. Uh, the Sunday night football matchup is the Bears traveling to the L.A. Rams. Those are two big uh, Sunday night games, especially in the wake of COVID-19 restrictions um, being lifted and relaxed. Um, I know that Las Vegas is uh, relaxing a lot of their uh, restrictions. They're, excuse yeah. me, they're going maskless um, inside casinos. I'm sure it's going to be a packed house on that Monday night football game. And because it's the Ravens, 
Um, as much as me being a Patriots fan, I can't stand the Baltimore Ravens. Um, they are still one of the premier teams, and especially with Lamar Jackson at quarterback. Um, as we go into week two, let me look to that week real quick. I got a game right off the top that I can uh, think. Oh, yeah? Right here. Yes, I do. Cincinnati versus Chicago. Andy Dalton at quarterback against his old team. Unless Justin Fields proves to be the better guy. Crossing my fingers, but, you know. I, uh, I am too. Uh, I, I'm not a, a Bears fan. You know, I, I'm really not. Oh, I know you're but, not. But, man, it's like the last quarterback to give the Bears any real run of success being Jay Cutler. And I really never liked Jay Cutler at all. And then you had Rex Grossman take him to the Super Bowl against Peyton Manning. It's just unfortunate that you had to face Peyton Manning actually being in the game. I know he went to. Um, I know Jay, Jay. I know Jay went to go. Jay went to the store the other day. He went to throw a loaf of bread in his car and it got intercepted. <laughs> um, ah, that's a good one. Yeah, that is a good one. Another interesting Week Two matchup: Sunday Night Football, Chiefs at Ravens. Uh, that is always fun seeing Lamar Jackson and Patrick Mahomes. Uh, oh yeah, duking it out. As we move into Week Number Three. Uh, games of note for myself at least uh, Chargers at Chiefs for me just because I do really like Justin Herbert um, you know I think he'll have a good season I don't envision a sophomore slump uh, from him at all um, Rams versus the Buccaneers the Rams and the Buccaneers that ought to be a very good game the Sunday night football matchup is the Packers at 49ers a rematch of the NFC Championship game from two years ago. Monday Night Football is Eagles at Cowboys. Oof. Well, Eagles. So that might be a bad game or it might be a good game. You never know. Well, let's face it. It can't be as worse as Philadelphia and da- and uh, uh, Philadelphia and Washington from last year at the end of the season. Oh, mm. oh that was terrible. So week four. I think we all know the game that we're looking forward to in week four. Mm-hmm. And there might be a reason why you don't see many juicy matchups during week four. The only juicy matchup that I can really see is Steelers at Packers, a Super Bowl 45 rematch. Other than that, there's nothing juicier than Sunday night football, Tampa Bay traveling to Foxborough, Tom Brady returning to Foxborough. Now, I have a couple of thoughts about this game. Brady needs about 1,100 yards to go and pass Drew Brees for the all-time passing leader in the NFL. Yes or no, he breaks it in Foxborough. I say 1,000% yes. As yep. well? Yeah. Yes, yeah. sir. I, I think that's the animus. He goes and gets it in Foxborough. Now, here's the other part do that that's when you know that bill belichick is going to play eight defensive backs and make tampa bay run the ball because he knows (laughs) you're not good sorry let me go and do my bill you're you're not gonna no put eight defensive backs out there uh yeah you're not you're not gonna uh (laughs) you're not gonna correct me today tom well, it makes sense that Bill Belichick is actually not on this call because they usually replace him just like they do in the Madden games. <laughs> and it's a good thing my name is not John Blaine because I'm pretty sure I've seen that name used for uh, Bill Belichick in the games anyway. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> I wow! Coach, not Bill Belichick. Oh my god! Oh, John is going to fight all of these shots. He's going to be like, "What did I do?" <laughs> What did you not do? It's okay. Yeah, no, it's we're we're rolling with it. I, I, again, that is a big game, and even if he does go in and get the record that night, I mean, that is going to be such a huge achievement for him, especially where the next guy on the list is nowhere close to breaking the record. And the only person that I could think of that would break all, all of those passing records is probably a Patrick Mahomes or somebody in that draft class, or younger 
you know, a Patrick Mahomes or a Trevor Lawrence, possibly a Zach Wilson. Oh, well, maybe even Mac Jones. Maybe he does become Brady 2.0 for the Patriots, and then y'all better watch out. So we're going to move on to week five as I go and skim through. I'm not so, oh, wow. Bills at Chiefs, some night football that week. That's the big game. Mm-hmm. To me, at least, that's the big game that week. Yes, hands down. Um, you know, I I really, I I really was surprised at the Bills, and as much as they're in the AFC East, I was rooting for them. I was rooting for the Bills last year because it wasn't going to be Patrick Mahomes, and I just I'm like, let's give that city something to cheer for i mean the buffalo sabers are pitiful they don't have a basketball team they don't have a baseball team let's give them something the same thing with cleveland one, we away from winning winning at all buffalo yeah. had a great season and our uh we had a uh, obviously one of our guests that was on our show a couple of times danielle mccartan said that she was rooting for buffalo to do really well because they had all the right pieces pretty much to make a, to make a run as a team to the championship and never one game away from, from making that run. And Buffalo, I think is a team on the rising right now. I think they could do a great job. Oh, they absolutely can. Um, and I definitely think that Josh Allen, despite the last, the first, first couple of years in the league where his accuracy was really not that great. I think he's made leaps and bounds. Year four ought to be, making a little bit more um, leaps and bounds when it comes to the game. I don't really like watching him play. Like for some reason, I just, I enjoy watching Josh Allen. And that's weird coming from a New England Patriots fan. I'm enjoying watching a Buffalo Bill player. Something I would never thought I'd go and say in my life. Maybe you're becoming a Buffalo Bills fan. No, no, I am not becoming a Buffalo Bills fan. Okay, then okay, that's impossible. At least Cam to the New York Giants is still possible. <laughs> yes. I'm Hindu with the one liners tonight, folks. Thank you very much. Oh yeah. So week six in the oh, NFL. Yeah. We've got two juicy matchups that I go and see, and, and technically three, actually. Uh, up four. <laughs> all of a sudden I'm just finding them all. Um, obviously you got Packers Bears. That's always a good game to go and watch. Going for over 100 years, man. Yep. It, and mm-hmm. even though the Packers are usually the winners of the game, um, especially in the last decade, it's still a fun, fun game to go and watch because of just the history between those two clubs. Not only not only the history, but the intensity of the rivalry itself. Mm-hmm. Because you know those, like, like for instance, like, like your Crosstown Classics in baseball, you know, whether it be, you know, whether it be, you know, you whether it be Yankees, whether it be Yankees, Red Sox, or whether it be, you know, whether it be matchups like that, Bears Packers are some of the most intense games because you know the Bears are going to be out for the kill. And same thing with the Packers on the offensive side of the ball, defensive side, it's it's same thing for the for the Pack, the Pack just, or for uh, the Bears. The Bears just always come in there ready to destroy. You know, so I'm excited to see how physical it's going to get this time around and mainly the mainly to see what's going to happen between now and then with the whole Aaron Rodgers situation is that's really going to be a telltale sign of how the Bears will be able to play this season and how they're and how the Packers offense is going to be able to run and Ezra I, I know as a Chicago fan you can attest to this too as well when it comes to Chicago versus Green Bay games there have been some incredible moments in these games between these two organizations over the years yes there have man it's been Plenty of great moments, plenty of great plays on both sides of the ball. There's been some big defensive stops from, you know, whether it be Erlacher in, in, in the day, whether it be Erlacher, whether it be, you know, even farther back, like, you know, William Perry or Walter Payton or whoever. It did. And then, of course, you got the offensive side of the ball. You can't forget none other than the, the greatest, in my opinion, the greatest kick punt returner of all time, Devin Hester, who, is, who has made some grandioso plays. And so oh, yeah. I, this rivalry is unmatched. That's that's going to be the game I'm looking forward to this season um, just to see what happens. And like I said, the Air Rodgers situation is going to be a telltale sign of what's to come offensively between both teams. And Ezra, um, I will go and say there is no Devin Hester without one of 
my favorite players of all time in the NFL. And the person that got me to fall in love with the special teams game in the NFL um, with punt and kicking and returns, Gail Sayers. Gail Sayers, yep. The old number 40. There would not be a Devin Hester or a, um, a Bethel Johnson um, or any of these electric punt and kick returners without a Gail Sayers. Mm-hmm. Um, and yes, that is absolutely true. I am a massive special teams mark in Super Bowl 53 when it was the Rams and the Patriots. Everybody I knew talking about that game thought it was boring because there was no offense and it was all defense. And I went, are you kidding me? I loved that. Not only was it a defensive struggle for both teams, the punters were the most valuable players because field position ultimately was the winner of that game. Mm-hmm. Um, other matchups of note in week number six, the Arizona Cardinals at the Cleveland Browns. Uh, so that's Kyler mm. Murray and Baker Mayfield um, battling it out. The Dallas Cowboys traveling to Foxborough to face the New England Patriots. Um, a Super Bowl 40 rematch between the Seattle Seahawks and the Pittsburgh Steelers, and then the Buffalo Bills and the Tennessee Titans, two teams that are definitely on the rise in the AFC. Moving on to week seven. Jets, Patriots. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Whatever. Chiefs, Titans. Uh, definitely eh, going to be a, yeah. a bigger game. Other than that, I don't see many like really intriguing matchups for week seven. Um, It just seems like a ho-hum type of week, which is fine. Not every week has to have a blockbuster game. You do, you know, it's like with a rock concert, you know, you go and see a show, you know, you want a chance to kind of cool off a little bit, you know, you don't want to be, you know, balls to the wall from start to finish. You you want to kind of have a point in the middle of the show where you're like, all right, let's, let's mellow out, let's tone it down. We'll pick it right also- back up in a couple of minutes, but let's give ourselves a little bit of a breather here, and then we'll go and rocket that shit right back up to 11. Yes. Well, you also got to think, too, you also got to think, too, just that not every game, and not every great game has to be the featured game of the week. It doesn't have to be the opening game of a season or Sunday, Monday night, Thursday night prime time. It doesn't have to be that. It could be a it could be a game that you don't get because of blackout services. It it could be a game just in the middle of the afternoon that you oh I'll watch this later and it ends up being a very great offensive or defensive battle. Remember so, Remember that oh. game between uh, uh, New York Giants and the New Orleans uh, Saints when Eli and Brees, when they threw all those touchdowns, it mm-hmm. was a game nobody was looking at. Oh, that's going to be a great game. You, you know, they were like, no. they were like, whoa, look at this. They and, were looking at that game like, yeah, this just be any standard Sunday NFL football game. And that ended up being the game of the week. That ended up being the game of the year almost. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, same thing with like with week eight, where there really aren't the most intriguing of matchups with Steven. Like you said, you never know. Carolina Panthers at Atlanta Falcons could end up being like an Eli Manning, Drew Brees, six sure. and seven touchdowns apiece for each other or something like that. You know, some some ridiculous stat or yeah, yeah. You know, That's the it. Yeah. Jacksonville Jaguars. And don't forget about upsets as well. Jacksonville mm-hmm. Jaguars could walk into Seattle. And Trevor Lawrence could kick the snot out of the Seattle defense. Mm-hmm. Um, a game of note, Monday Night Football, is New York Giants at the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, and the only reason I say that's a game of note is just ratings in general. You know, it's Kansas right. City. They're one of the new NFL darlings. And the New York Giants, it's New York. I mean, it's the same thing with why the Cowboys always go and get primetime games, or always get the 4 o'clock slot. It's the Cowboys. As much as I like to go and rag on the team, their old ratings get. Massive ratings get. Yes. Moving on into week nine. Now, here's an interesting game of note. Patriots at Panthers. And the only reason I say it's an interesting game of note is if Cam Newton is still the starting quarterback at this point. 
Did he go to the Giants yet? <laughs> well, no, because the, the I don't think the no the Panthers do play the Giants, but I'm assuming that the Panthers are still going to have uh, or not the the Patriots will still have Cam Newton on the roster. Ah. <sighs> You know that meme with the fairly odd parents, uh, with the dad who says this is this is where I put this trophy if I had one. That's yep. the Dallas. That's the Dallas Cowboys, and the dad is Jerry Jones. <laughs> this, is, this is uh, this is where I'd go and put my uh, my my fourth Super Bowl trophy if I had one. If I even knew how to go and be a football GM. All I really know about is uh. How to go and buy big, white, expensive yachts, and how to go and find all the best Dallas whores you can find. Yeah, I don't do a good Jerry Jones impression, I guess. Um, you tried. Yeah, I tried. I try these impressions all the time. Some of them are going to hit. Some of them are not. That one clearly did not. My Bill Belichick one is always pretty good, though, because my most most of my most of my impressions are pop culture, so they don't fit in this spectrum. You can still go into a pop culture reference. I mean, look at me. I'm Peter Griffin. All of a sudden, well, well I'll tell. Well, I'll tell you that. I will tell you that. Freaking Dallas and New York are the Lulu of of the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> ah, there we go. There we go. Moving on. Um, other interesting Maybe. games to note, Nat, uh, in week number nine, the Green Bay Packers, the Kansas City Chiefs, the Super Bowl matchup we didn't get last year, uh, which that probably could have been a very fun game. And a Super Bowl 34 rematch between the Tennessee Titans and the L.A. Rams, though at the time of that Super Bowl, they were the St. Louis Rams. The greatest show on turf uh, back in the day. And then the Patriots, you know, beat them in a last second field goal two years later. But yep. 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 So moving on, week 10. Uh ladies and gentlemen, we lied to you at the beginning of this. We are going through all 16 weeks of the NFL. 17. 17. Well, like, I'm skimming through and I'm not really seeing. Yeah, I'm not really seeing uh Anything that jumps out of the page. I'm going to move on to week 11. Uh, Patriots at Falcons on a Thursday night football for week 11. Um, I mean, it's a Super Bowl 51 rematch. It would be a good game. And if the rumors are true that Julio Jones is likely to be traded and the Patriots seem to be the most likely of suitors, Perhaps there's Julio Jones's get back game. Who knows? Um, other than that, the most intriguing matchup on the night would maybe be Monday Night Football, Giants Buccaneers. Maybe. Or 49ers Jaguars, possibly Trey Lance. Um Oh, uh, isn't that lovely? <laughs> you saw it too. I just saw the text from Johnny Boy, from the real John Blaine. I le- Sorry, I left my phone at home. Ah! Okay. Whoa, I... I oh. It's okay. Uh, I know, because look, we're doing the show. We'll we're fine. Post this later. We're going to post this later yeah. on tonight, so we're yeah. fine. As of current time on this recording, it is nine ten p.m. Um, Eastern time. Um. Yeah, I'm just going to keep skimming um, through these games. Um. Oh, this is the one where uh, week 12, we have the annual Thanksgiving games. Bears at Lions, Raiders at Cowboys, Bills at Saints uh, closes out the night. That's a pretty decent slate of games. I like that. I, I, I like that matchup. Uh, other than that, there's really nothing that's jumping out of the page, at least not to me. Yeah. 
uh cowboys at saints next uh, that's been a trend i've seen the last few years of the cowboys when they have a thanksgiving game they have the next thursday night game as well uh patriots bills on monday night football that week uh 49ers seahawks um and then we also have Ravens steelers uh so those are those two games i just mentioned are always good games to go and watch because those two teams hate each other they hate each other with a burning passion steelers vikings of the super bowl matchup uh from years past I'm, I'm realizing that, like, oh, I am taking forever uh, going through this schedule. If you guys have anything you want to add, feel free. <laughs> Please. Well, I will, ju- I will jump in and say that, say this about Cleveland. I mean, Cleveland last year had one hell of a season. And I think if Cleveland plays their cards right, they can have a really good season this year because. The majority of the same team is back. They they got they did really good in the draft this year, and it's going to be a very interesting year to see if Cleveland can continue that can, that streak of having a good season. Finally, can they prove? Mm. Can they stand? Can they stand up there with the elite teams in the NFL? No, and I I definitely think that they can. You know, I think they have a roster that's set up for success. Uh, Florida just tied the game up with about three minutes to go in the third period. I uh, just saw it on the TV. Um, I definitely think that Cleveland is set up for success um, in that regard. I think that they can, you know, get back to 10 wins, you know, maybe more, uh, depending upon how the uh, season plays out. And actually, I need to start – thinking differently when it comes to 10 wins and 11 wins this is one extra game it's a 17 game season so 10 wins would be 10 and 7 so getting to 10 wins would be like getting to 9 wins now so we've got to start remembering that now um yeah I'm not seeing like really juicy matchups i mean other than your standard like division games and all that hopefully get something good in week 17. uh the night games the night football vikings at packers and then browns at steelers on monday night i mean can't go wrong with uh can't go wrong with those two games yeah, that's a, that's about it. Oh, uh, a game of note: Trevor Lawrence uh, traveling to Foxborough on Week 17, and of course, everybody knows the last week of the NFL season. It's all the division opponent games, so you know the Cowboys will face the Eagles, and we do not know what the Sunday Night Football matchup is because they've always gone and put the game with the biggest playoff stakes as yep. a Sunday Night game. But I will ask you guys this. When it yes. comes to this upcoming upcoming season, who do you think has the most pressure this season to have a good season this year? Hmm. That's a very good question. That is. Um, <clears throat> they don't have the most pressure, um, but I want to go and see what the response will be from Kansas City after losing the Super Bowl. Um, right. You know, everybody knows about the Super Bowl hangover. Uh, when you go and win, I would like to go and see the response from the loser because uh, we know what happened last year with San Francisco. The injury bug hit hard. Yep. Um, we've seen other Super Bowl losers, you know, go back and win the Super Bowl again. We've seen others, um, you know, kind of fall off a little bit. I'd be very interested to go and see that. In terms of most pressure, that. Honestly, that might be the most pressure. You know, obviously, maybe a Tampa Bay would probably have the most pressure because they're the defending champs. Yep. Lamar Jackson. Yes, Lamar Jackson. Yeah, you know what? Lamar Jackson. Yeah, I said yeah, team, but I, I, also I, could have, I also could have said players as well because, I mean, Lamar, I mean, man, two years ago, he lit the NFL up as an MVP caliber player. He had an MVP season. All those touchdowns, rushing and throwing, 
and then he gets beat by Tennessee in the playoffs, and then the ne- and then the, the next season go around. He did not have that much of a great season. Now they got hot at the right time, but in the biggest moments of pressure, when it mattered the most in the playoffs against Buffalo, he crumbled under the pressure. Yeah. Um, and I know a certain Baltimore fan who was not happy about that game. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Ash. Yeah, Ashley is a Ravens fan as well. And she she was not happy about that game. She was like, what the hell, Lamar? Like, what are you doing? Like, like that was not a great performance by Lamar against Buffalo in that game. Like, I remember we were we – were, checking out that game as we were doing the nation show watching a bound for glory that night mm-hmm. and i'm sorry not bound for glory i'm sorry uh it was um some uh pay-per-view uh for impact i can't remember what number what, what it was uh anyways but yeah that maybe that was, no surrender n- <sighs> i can't remember uh but either way it was january and it was a cold night for 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 Baltimore fans that night because it was not a pretty sight for uh for uh, Baltimore. It was it was terrible. Uh, let's see. It's gonna bother me that I don't know um, <clears throat> what that uh, what that show was. Hard to kill. Thank you. Hard to kill. That was it. Wow, that, that, I I really don't think that was that long ago. I know that was January. I know. It, 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 I mean, this year has flown by fast so far. I mean, and like I remember that game because we were watching Hard to Kill that night, and we got another we got we got a text saying that hey, you know it's it's ten to, it's ten to three Buffalo. They're up. I'm like oh wow, and the next thing you know, towards the end, end of the third quarter into the fourth quarter. They turned the game around with that pick six. I was like, well, that's it. And mm. I mean, Lamar Jackson has a lot of pressure on him this year. Yeah. But they, he needs – what he needs to do as a quarterback, he needs to improve on his skills when it comes to throwing the ball and not focusing on being a running quarterback. A little score update on the NHL again. Florida and Tampa Bay Lightning are tied at five apiece. Interesting. Not only that, not only that, the third period has come to an end. Oh, more playoff overtime. Nice. Yep. Now for right now, who... yes, right now also, I was gonna say Pittsburgh and New and the Islanders are tied three apiece as well. Wow. Canadians are tied with Toronto, also as well. One. Piece. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh wow! wow. <laughs> this is the, this is sports show, not Monday Night Raw. Shut up, Batman. Yeah, we're we're I, not gonna need, we are not gonna need a bigger boat for this train. <laughs> I still train. can't get over that one. Oh, train, right? We're in the same place now. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> oh, that's how to watch Monday so, Night's face. Anyway. Um, for those who do not know, uh, with playoff overtime, with uh, the NHL, the regular season, the overtime period, it's five minutes of three on three. And if they give the five minutes, it's still a tie game. They go to a shootout. Essentially, who can score more goals in a one-on-one um, like penalty shot situation? Right. Um, but in the playoffs, it's sudden death. And it's 20-minute periods. There are no TV timeouts the only chance that they go and have to kind of stop and take a quick little breather is after 10 minutes, um, like after the 10 minute mark in the period, they will go and stop to have the crew go out on the ice and just kind of scrape it down a little bit um, and kind of reassert, like retouch it up a little bit on the ice. And then after that, they just keep <laughs> going. They play until there's a winner. Yep. So I've seen five overtime. Uh, playoff games. I've seen two overtime. Last night was a, a double overtime uh, game for Boston and uh, Washington. So this is going to be fun, especially with these two teams that have just seemed to be scoring at will uh, tonight. Ten goals so far scored. Wow. Um, 
there is a, a pretty bad injury uh, going on right now. John John Blaine just let us know in the chat or let us know in the uh, Discord. Uh, John Tavares for the Toronto Maple Leafs was taken out in the stretcher after taking an inverted knee to the head. Oof. He, gave, he gave a thumbs up as he was being carted out of the arena. Wow. And I saw, I, I'm not sharing the video because it is just absolutely gut-wrenching to go and uh, to go and see, but I saw the trainers immediately, you know, you see in pro wrestling, they go and throw the X up. And in the NHL, they just, they're immediately waving for like a stretcher. He was stretched out. Fortunately, he did put a thumbs up um, as he was being stretched out, meaning that he's, o- he's okay for the most part. But you won't see him again in the playoffs this, uh, this year. No. no. That, that's, very, that's very unfortunate. That's why, as an athlete, when you go out there on the ice, on the basketball court, on the diamond, mm-hmm. and, you know, no matter what sport it is, the football field, MMA in the octagon or in the ring as a boxer or even as a professional wrestler. These bad things can happen in, in sports and entertainment. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, they absolutely can. You know, again, we went, I said earlier, Dak Prescott, you know, compound ankle fracture. Yep. Hopefully he'll be able to come back and be the same. Dustin May, a couple of weeks ago, found out that he's got to have Tommy John surgery for a UCL tear. Um, speaking of pro wrestling, the Miz with a uh, right ACL tear. Yep, he's going to be on Sunday. the shelf for a while. And Will Osprey for New Japan. Yep, and Will Osprey in uh, in New Japan with a neck injury. And yep. I don't think we know details on the severity of the injury, do we? Mm, I don't think so. Well, I know. Well, it was it was reported that he went back to Essex, England, where he's originally from, to seek treatment. That's why he. Uh, Surrendered the IWGP World Heavyweight Title, so, oh. so, but, but that, but like you said, injuries can happen at any given time in sports, entertainment, whatever you're doing. Um, it's unfortunate. Hopefully, John Tavares doesn't have any, you know, structural damage. Hopefully, he can get back quick and get back in before the playoffs are over. Yep. Yes. From what I saw in the video, it was an inadvertent knee. It it wasn't a dirty hit at all um, that he took from a Canadiens player. He was already going down to the ice on a hit, and the uh, Montreal player's uh, knee went into his head as he was skating by. Uh, he tried to avoid him, uh, kind of jump over him. It just, it's just a, a rough situation to go and be in. It, it really is. Yeah. So, All right, moving on to the next point of entry. Yes, the next uh, point of entry is going to be a pretty loaded one because I've got several thoughts uh, regarding it, and I'm sure that you guys are going to have your thoughts on it as well. Mm -hmm. We're going to be talking baseball. Specifically, the episode title tonight, No Hitter Mania, because it just seems that we have a rash of no hitters this year. Yes. Record is seven. No hitters in one season set in 2012. We're at six. And we're not even halfway through the damn season already. It's, nope. it's May 20th. Most teams have only played about 40-some-odd games. We've got six no hitters. And not only that, it's not six no hitters from Clayton Kershaw, Jacob DeGrom, um, you know, and all these pitchers of yesteryear, Cliff Lee, uh Madison Bumgarner. Oh, wait, he does have a no hitter this year, but because of stupid MLB rules where a no hitter has to only be in a nine inning game, even though a seven inning double header game is a complete game, that's not a no hitter. But Madison Bumgarner has a no hitter. Prove me wrong. It still counts. Still counts to me. And honestly, it's a rule that should change because as uh Raiden Dallas on starting hind went and said. It's illegal in some places to go and spit on the ground, but spitting is a natural part. Are you going to be arrested for spitting? It's right. the rule. So, with all this said, this rash of no hitters, and again, it's not even, you know, like the the top dogs. It's not you know your Nolan Ryan type pitchers. It's not your greatest ones. It's Wade Miley, Joe Musgrove. The kid in Detroit the other night, Spencer Turnbull, uh, Carlos Rodon, John Means. Now, John Means is a great pitcher, don't get me wrong, but 
plays for Baltimore. And yeah, he's got good command, but it's still like these are all middle of the road pitchers. What is going on here? So I'm reading a blog from Barstool Sports uh, by Coley Mick, who goes and says that he thinks ever since the lockout in 94 that there's been a problem in baseball. And it's to do with juicing and not just steroid juicing. He's also talking about the juicing of the balls. Balls were juiced. The league kept saying they weren't, but the balls were juiced. Made them lighter so the ball could go and travel farther. That led to more home runs. Now, you can also go and say that analytics has also led to this home run or bust craze, where if it's not a home run, it's usually a strikeout or a pop out. Everybody's wanting to go and hit the home run because the ball is lighter. Pitchers are now re- uh, relying on pine tar much more than they ever used to because they're trying to go and get an advantage as well. With all that said, it shouldn't get to such an advantage that you have almost a weekly no hitter or the potential for a no hitter. And then last night, Corey Kluber goes and has a no hitter for the New York Yankees. Mm-hmm. Now, Corey Kluber is a former Cy Young winner. So this one makes sense. He's a good pitcher. But there's a big, there's a big, big problem with baseball right now with hitting and pitching. The pitching is not, oh my God, this is such a great pitching class. And the hitting, it's not abysmal hitters. It's hitters that are being told, swing for the fences. So they're having a poor batting average because they're not hitting for average, hitting to get on base. That's my biggest problem with the stat nerds. It's also my biggest problem with baseball as a whole because the game has changed from a game of ultimate strategy to a game of cheat girls. <clears throat> so any thoughts from you guys? Yes. I mean, like, like talking about that, I mean, when you, when you are looking at these stats, I mean, you, it's like <laughs> you, it's a team sport, right? And you can't be going out there and going, oh, how many hits, how many – or how many home runs can I get? So, I'm, Or how many hits can I get to pad up my stats? No, it's a team sport, and you have to play smart. You have to play as a team. You can't play as I. you got to play as we together as a unit. And it, it, it's a problem. I, I completely 110% agree. Ezra, how about you? I would pick the. Uh, I would say that the teams. It's always been a team sport. You can't just have one specific side of the ball. That's in every sport. That's in football. That's in hockey. That's in basketball. Both sides have to work together equally to make the magic happen. To get the wins. To get the trophies. The awards. Whatever the case may be. If you don't have a team that is, and I've said this before in, in previous shows. If you don't have a well-balanced team, you're not going to go very far. No, at all. It's, 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 at like, it's, like, it's all. like it's like it's like it's like having it's like in hockey. It's like having a great it's like having a great captain, a great you know right wing and left wing. But if your defensemen are undersized and they can't keep up, then what's the point? You know, you have to have good defensemen with big, with good size on them that are able to take hits. And they are able to deliver them right back. Right. That's a similar way. That's a similar way in baseball. But in baseball, you have to have you have to have great hitters, great catchers. You have to have great. You have to have great people in the outfield, infield. You have to have everything well balanced. Yep. No, you, you definitely do. Um, it's definitely a team game. Um, you know, they have the same twenty-five players, one hat, um, yep. and you don't want it to become twenty-five players, twenty-five hats. No. So. Definitely not. Um, with that said, I just there, there needs to be some way to go and fix uh, Major League Baseball with hitting because it shouldn't just be about the home run ball. I know home runs are exciting. I mean, I was watching the highlight of Ronald Acuna Jr. last night uh, hitting the walk off the deep center uh, for the Atlanta Braves against the Mets. That was an exciting um, moment, but 
it kind of loses its luster when home runs are the talk of the town. Um, yeah. You know, it kind of loses how you really enjoy um, watching the game of baseball. And again, like I said, with the strategy, the strategy was to try to get on base. You know, it, like, look, you have um, extra innings. They have the new rule. There's a man on second. All right. Now so it you changes can... the game. Instead of trying to go and whack the ball and be the hero for the night, you're now trying to make sure that guy on second base scores. You're still the hero, but he's not going to be, you know, the ultimate home run hero. It's going to be knocking the guy from second in. Um, yes. I don't know. It, it, something needs to happen with baseball. The fact that you have people complain Planning about oh, there's too many no hitters. Well, if your guys were like you said, but actually were able to hit the ball consistently, there wouldn't be a lot of these no hitters right now at this juncture of the season. Well, I was looking the other night. Uh, Spencer Turnbull no hit the Seattle Mariners, who now as a team had at that point a 199 batting average. Oh. Batting averages are at 1968 levels, which is the worst season. In Major League Baseball, it it is bad. How bad? How it, it is just bad. How bad these these games are? It's bad. It's all bad. It really is. How how can you call yourself a Major League Baseball player, and if you're a hitter and your goal is to hit these balls to get your team on base or to hit those monster home runs, that is your job not just as an individual player to play well, but as a job for your team, to do service for your team. Because that is what baseball is, just like in any other sport, football, basketball, hockey. Why we keep preaching to the freaking choir right now? It is a team sport. Yeah. It, it's a team sport. And, he, and, he, and these people are complaining about, oh, there's too many no hitters. Dude, give me a break. This is amazing. Because anytime you can get stats like that and statistics going like that at this short juncture, at this point, hell, we might have more than at least 10 no hitters this season the way we're going right now. Because these players can't hit the damn ball. So if I was Major League Baseball and all these organizations and these owners and these players, shut up, put on your uniform, play the game that you say you love, and don't be complaining to all of us going, oh, there's too many no hitters. There should be no, no hardly any no hitters right now. Why? It's entertaining. It's also entertaining if these guys would actually hit the ball because right now they're hitting so badly. Come on. Exactly. It, it just, this season is just on par with some of the worst. Um, in major league base in major league baseball history and hopefully that leads to changes you know maybe a juicing in the ball and Coley mick on barstool sports was actually talking about why don't you have the players go and juice it's not like they're going on steroids but let them go and take whatever vitamins they wanted let them go and take you know different types of supplements that are ever going to help them out it's a much different baseball player than it was and i'm sorry i i loved watching Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa chase after Roger Maris's home run record and then Barry Bonds chase after them. Uh, and then Barry Bonds chasing after Hank Aaron's record. I loved both of those uh, moments in baseball history. And the steroid era in general was just very exciting. So go and have everybody get juiced up. You know, juice the pitchers up. Make sure they can go and use pine tar whenever they want. You know, and everybody tries to get an advantage in baseball anyway. So just let like any other sport. Yeah. <laughs> just let it roll. You know, don't try to go and stop Come anything. On. I mean, we, I mean, Kevin, you, me, Ezra, John, all of us that are sports fans, we were pissed when the Houston Astros won the way they won. When we found out the way they won by cheating to win the World Series against the Dodgers that season, that was horrible. I mean, the fact that they cheated to do what they did, they didn't need to cheat. Houston had a great team already assembled. They did. Um, and that one, as much as I'm here saying, you know, yeah, let's go and get the, uh, the advantage over people. And yeah, maybe it's technically cheating. I'm not doing an elaborate style of cheating like the Houston Astros did, you know, where they use trash cans and old video to go and determine what, um, what pitches were coming. 
I'm not yes. thinking of doing something like that. Right. Um, but with that said, maybe we can go and talk about the other big thing in baseball this week uh, that Ezra, you probably have a lot more information on um, since it, which Chicago team is your favorite? I'd have to go with uh, the crew from the south side of Chicago, the White Sox. All right. So you're familiar, I take it, with uh, the controversy uh, surrounding the White Sox this week? Oh, boy. Definitely. Uh, there were some comments that were made by uh, Tony La Russa. Of course, La Russa, known for being a hothead. Um, he's been uh, making some comments about uh, certain things that were said by uh, one of the pitchers on the White Sox. And uh, now he, his comments have kind of triggered different people in the, in the baseball world, including one of the most legendary pitchers of all time, C.C. Sabathia, oh. who had mm. – C.C. Sabathia had this to say on, on his on, – on the R2C2 podcast um, because – Larusa uh, was criticized uh, Yerman Mercedes for swinging and homering on a 3-0 pitch, if you remember that. Mm-hmm. It gives a position player in a blowout and having no issue with the twin throwing behind him. This is what um, this is what um, I believe this is um, uh, what Larusa said. Or this is not what Larusa said. I believe this is what uh, Savathi said. This is just fucking stupid. It's stupid, period. I'm sorry. This shit is terrible. He shouldn't be fucking managing the team. If you're not going to step up and have your players back, then what's the point of being the fucking manager of the White Sox? Shit is stupid as fuck. Sorry. And then LaRusa called, of course, LaRusa called Mercedes. Clueless and said he missed a take sign. Hmm. So, so it's not looking too good in the White Sox organization right now because of the hot-headedness of La Russa, which we which has been a problem in the past because he doesn't know how to keep his traps shut. And right. you know, I wouldn't really exactly say hot-headedness, but just this is a case of those pesky unwritten rules of baseball. You know, yeah. you gotta act like you've been there before. Don't go and pimp out your home run. Well, in the words of Max Muncie to Clayton Kershaw, hey. You don't want me to pimp out the home run. Go get the ball out of the ocean. Um, or no, not to Clay Kershaw. I'm asking Bumgarner. Um, I, I'm all for growing the game. I'm all for making the game better. You know, Trevor Bauer went and said uh, regarding all of this stuff, and he's one of the ones, excuse me, that's very much into growing the game and making it a newer game for newer faces to try to grow it and make it younger. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, where, yeah, you remember Mercedes went and hit a home run on a 3-0 pitch. He was a former position player. The, the rules are out the window. It's not like it's a, a standard pitcher on the mound. It's a position player. And I'm sorry, if you have a 3-0 count, pitch better. You guys are pros. You're being paid big dollars, big guaranteed dollars for the most part, to go and play what amounts to a child game. You guys are pros. Right. It's the same thing years and years ago in the 2007 Patriots were going 16 0 in the regular season. Um, there were calls for them to stop running up the score because they were winning 50 to nothing, 42 to 10, 56 to 3, ridiculous scores like that. And I remember going, no, you play until there's zero seconds on the clock. So if my team scores a touchdown with a minute to go, your defense sucks more exactly. than you really think. Exactly. Because, again, it's like you said with the football statistics. Just yep. like in football, like in basketball, when you had these these teams scoring 100-plus points and the teams only scoring, the other teams scoring like 75, 80 you know, points, whatever, well, maybe your team really isn't doing a great job. So you know what? You should be out there practicing doing your job and to kind of write your football part. Man, New England was scoring so many points that year, and then over the years, there's been teams that have scored that many points in games like New Orleans against Indianapolis, and that shellat of a win. <laughs> I mean, oof, that Wasn't was that bad. like that was sixty three or something, right? 
Yeah, like 63 to like seven. Seven, something like that. It, it was a you, ridiculous did you, score. Did you see Indianapolis going, well, they should start running up the score? No, they knew that their team was not great that day. No, their team wasn't great that year. That was the year that Peyton was out hmm. with his neck injury. That's right. Okay. I remember that. No, that's right. That was the year of Kerry Collins, for Christ's sakes. Yeah, Kerry Collins, Curtis Painter. Col- yeah. But, hey, look, at least they weren't Dan Orlovsky running into the back of the end zone for the Detroit. Oh, Lakers. Lord, yes. <laughs> but, you know, to go back to what we talk about with uh, Yara Mercedes and Tony La Russa, La Russa is an old – you know, he shouldn't be managing anymore. You know, especially when uh, Lance Lynn goes and chimes in and says, like, let me go and read what Lance Lynn said. There are no rules when a position player is pitching, adding, the more I play this game, the more these unwritten rules have gone away. Tony LaRusa said of those remarks, Lance has a locker. I have an office. I don't agree. Like, what kind of condescending bullshit statement is that? Right. To go in and say, like, you know, oh, well, I have an office and he doesn't, so I don't have to go and agree with what he has to say. Go, go, go. I, I don't know what I could go and say that won't get me in a little bit of trouble. <laughs> but it, it just, it, bo- it boggles my mind when you have all these people, like it happened with Fernando Tatis Jr. last year when he swung at a 3 0 pitch and hit a grand slam. Mm hmm. You know, and it's like, oh, he shouldn't have done that. You're not supposed to do something like that, especially when you're already got the game in hand. Again, <laughs> it's the pros. It's the pros. You guys are getting paid millions upon millions of dollars to go and play a professional game. Oh, give me a play break. Grand Slam, you should have hit a Grand Slam. Shut up. Play the game and get better. Quit being a yeah. lazy bum, you know, making all that money. I mean, my God. Give me a break. I mean, look at some of the, you know, look at some of these players out there that are making a gazillions of dollars. They're getting paid all this money and they're, and they're not even playing to their full potential because they got their money. They got their paycheck. That's why I'm worried with sports athletes across the landscape of sports, because these guys are going, Hey, you should be paying me money. Well, that's why I'm worried with that, with that Prescott, all, all, all the respect, God bless him. The fact that that guy is coming back from a horrific injury, you know, this season, I want him to play well, but he's, he's been begging about this money stuff. And I'm like, dude, you, you haven't had a phenomenal career. You've had an okay career, but I, I said it back in when I went on that rant, I don't think he's worth the money. Is he good? Yes. But he's got to prove to all of us that he is worth the money. And that's the problem with these athletes. Like I just said, these athletes, they, they get on their high horse and say, Oh, well, I don't have to do work hard and all this stuff. L- look at your fans, dude. If your fans are diehards, they're going to support you no matter what, and they're going to call you out on your bullshit if you're not doing great. They're going to ride with you if, they're, if you're great, and they're going to they're going to they're going to tell you what you should be doing if you're not doing good. Because as we all know, sports fans can be very boisterous. Yeah. Absolutely, especially from go. certain markets, especially from your certain big time markets, Chicago. You know, New York slash Boston area, mm-hmm. uh, Florida, Texas. Uh, you know, Calif- certain California teams. You're looking. There you're is looking at Philly, who you know, pelted Santa with snowballs. Yep. Um. Hey. I'm not gonna, I, I was gonna put. I was gonna include Pittsburgh because then I don't want certain members of the nation who like Pittsburgh to get mad at me. They just tend to be. I don't know, like, I don't want to say whiny because that just seems a little too harsh to go and say about Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to say whiny in case you want Deb housing after you. No, no, it's it's, it's not that, like, I want somebody to come after me. I just, I, like, whiny just seems to be the only word I can think of when it comes to Pittsburgh fans. Um, Or Steve, because Mark, Steve, and Deb are huge Steelers fans, which is, okay. I guess. Oh, but no, I, I know. I'm a huge Patriots honk. I'll go and defend them until the day I die, you know, and yeah. I have no problem with making fun of other teams, but yeah. go ahead. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not know, a member but, of five teams like, like Tommy Dreamer is, and we love yeah. Tommy. You know, look, I, I kind of yep. look at it where I'll go and take it all on the chin. 
You know, I really will. You know, go ahead, go and tell me that Tom Brady played with deflated balls. Hey, look, thanks for letting us know that the balls weren't uh, doing all that well. We won uh, three Super Bowls after that, and he won a fourth. Yep. So, you know, and then Spygate, it's like, ah, uh, well, you know, whatever. Yeah, no, we were videotaping. You talk about deflated balls. I guess, I guess Tom Brady and a football have something in common, huh? <laughs> they must. <laughs> so, hey, I'm about to go and admit a special guest. Oh, is he yeah. here? Yep, he's here. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't he is the that. host of Nation Night Fights on the, on our Nation Sports Show. Welcome, Mr. Hijacker Mike. What's up, brother? What's up, y'all? What's going on? What's up, man? Not much. How's everybody doing tonight? Good, man. Doing good. good. man. Glad you can make it, brother. Yeah, yeah. man. I figure I'll uh, drop by for a few minutes with y'all and see what's going on. How's the you show know? rolling tonight? Show's rolling good. really Outside of the technical difficulties, we've been rolling really good, man. It's been going pretty smooth. I've been having some great conversation. I think if you don't mind, maybe we can switch a little bit from what we're talking about. And let's get into some uh, little bit of boxing news, shall we? Mm-hmm. Nice little segue. In- including, yeah, including some breaking news that just came out via fight about a certain fight that is now verbally agreed to for July. Yeah, we're looking at uh, Tyson Fury and uh, Deontay Wilder, huh? Wow. I just just seen the news come across, so it looks like uh, Anthony Joshua and Fury will be pushed back and waiting because Deontay threw in his claws for his trilogy. And the odds right now are heavily favored for uh, Fury in this fight. I'm a big Deontay Wilder fan. I know he... uh, he hasn't been doing well in, in, in a couple of his fights in the previous uh, few years. You know, I know COVID's been a problem, but I'm still uh, Team Deontay, man. But uh, we'll see how this goes, man. This should be an action-packed fight. It should be entertaining. Uh, now, I don't know all the details because I just, I just rolled in. I got to pull it up and check it out. But uh, I know we haven't been on for the last couple of weeks, and we actually missed a pretty big fight two weeks ago with uh, Canelo Alvarez and Joe Saunders, Billy Joe Saunders, sorry. Yep. And that was a hard hitting fight. If any of you guys got to catch any of that, uh, Saunders got sent to the hospital and had emergency surgery. Oh no. Yeah, he uh, he got TKO'd, uh, what round was that? Uh, I forget what round that was. I Let believe that was, I believe it was seventh or eighth. Yes, uh, it was the. Let me drop down here real quick. Is that the infamous fight hijacker where you showed us the video where he got hit so hard it knocked him out like like, like right away, like he was out so cold. That was uh, that was another fight. Uh, okay, Chicago uh, a couple of weeks ago where that's he, right, dude, and the dude just fell asleep like Nate Robinson when he yeah. fought. Okay, all okay, <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, but no, this was uh, a TKO in the eighth round. Uh, Sanders went down, but he he wanted to continue, but the referee and his corner said no more because his his eyes were looking pretty bad. Uh, he had to go through emergency surgery uh, to fix an eye injury during that fight. Wow. Um, what else we got? Uh, it says here, Canelo landed a powerful uppercut that appeared to inflict serious damage to Saunders' right uh, to eye socket. Uh, I'm not sure which one, leaving him unable to see as he failed to rise from his stool for the start of the ninth round. So he didn't get up to go back in in the ninth round in that fight. Mm-hmm. And his corner pulled the card and said, nah, that's it. But uh, later on that night, or I believe it was the next day, I couldn't remember which, uh, he had went in for surgery for uh, orbital bone fracture. Oof. You know, and when you get hit in the eye like that, man, that's that's some serious shit right there. You don't it is. you don't want to play with that, man. Mm-mm. You know, uh, other than that, it, it was a fairly decent fight. The fight was actually fairly close on the scorecards where they said the judges had it. Uh, 78 to 74, two judges and 77 to 75 from the third judge. But they mm. said, uh, Canelo outboxed and uh, by CompuBox landed a margin of 73 to 60 uh, and landing 53% of his power shots that night. So Alvarez was Alvarez, man. It, it, there's really nothing you can stop from that dude. That dude is one of the greatest of all times. Mike Tyson 
has signed off on this dude. So, you know, he, he's one of the real deals right now in the business. Right. You know, um, you guys, did you guys get a chance to check out any highlights or see anything off of that fight? I, I did. I, I was able to catch uh, a couple of highlights, including the finish. And Canelo was just on fire. His, yeah, his oh, footwork yeah. was on, his footwork was on point. His uh, punches were, he was very selective with his punches. He didn't throw just to throw and waste a lot of energy. His punches, every punch meant something. Yeah, right. definitely. Now this dude holds four titles. He holds the WBC World Super Middleweight, the WBA Super World Super Middleweight, the WBO World Super Middleweight, and the Ring Super Middleweight Championship belts. This guy is draped in gold, man. I'm just wondering if he's going to make a gold grill and, you know, turn them belts into, you know, a rap video or something. Yes. <laughs> yes. Screw Kenny Omega. That's the real belt collector. <laughs> At least, he's, at least he's actually showing up and he'll defend his championship. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, and there, wow. there was there was some other fights we had. I haven't really had a chance to get into it because, man, I've been I've been bombarded with my kids season. You know, they've been changing games around, man. I, I got to put a video package together for you guys to play of him pitching. He's been in five innings, struck out nine batters, hit two, unfortunately, Got two ground balls and only given up one hit in five innings of work. Huh. Okay. That's, that's impressive. That's impressive, you know? man. You know, and right now, uh, if once the season ends, I have a friend that runs an auto shop, and his son, uh, Cal Stevenson, plays right now for the Tampa Bay Rays minor league system, and he runs camps out here during the off season. So I'm looking okay. to get my son there because I'm thinking if I can get him to shift his hips like you're supposed to as a pitcher. He'll go from a 57 mile per hour to probably 70 miles per hour by next season. Right. And I'll, I'll be I'll be looking forward to that, man. Have uh, Have you guys dabbled into any baseball news or anything yeah. going on yes. so far? Yeah, we, we yeah, were we have, just but, but... talking uh, before uh, and I had to come in here. We were just talking about uh, baseball. We had just finished up a discussion about uh, Tony La Russa and his uh, oh. idiotic comments. That's dude. I'll be honest. Tony La Russa's probably my favorite manager of all time because of what he done during my childhood with the A's out here in Oakland. But what he has done has just been, it, it's just been insane, man. How can you, you know, how can you do that, man? And plus, I, I think he should have stayed retired. He should have stayed. I don't know where he was before, but he was in the front office somewhere and that's where he should have stayed in my opinion. Yeah. You know, he's trying to pull a, a what is that? Joe Madden, who is, almost 90 something, almost 90 years old coaching. I don't know if he's still coaching, but I know he was coaching a few years back with uh, Florida. And sometimes when you hit a certain point, you just got to, you just got to uh, call it quits. Yeah, you have to, but you know, like I said, what's up there? Uh, Joe Madden, by the way, is 67 and he is currently managing. Then who the hell am I? Is he the manager of the angels? He's the manager of the oh, Angels Johnny now. Boy. Yeah, I know. Johnny Boy Johnny? showed up. Hey, John. Then who the yeah. hell? Uh, who the Dusty hell? Baker. Hi, I know he's down in Houston. He's definitely another one of the older crowd. Hi, uh, Jack. Are you thinking of Lou Pinella? It could be. It could be. But I thought Madden, when he was coaching uh, Florida, when he, was, when, he, when he was taking them to the playoffs, I thought he was, you know, mid eighty. No, 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 no. I know exactly who you're thinking of. Oh, who is that? John uh, Crap. What was his last name? The old dude. Yeah, that's maybe I'm just getting my names mixed up. Kevin, he was the guy who was the manager of the uh, Marlins during their 03 run. All right, hang on. I think that's who Hijacker's talking about. Yeah, I'm I'm getting confused with it though, man, because you got a bunch of names jumbled up out here, man. And yeah, yeah, um, I, if that's who it is. Yeah, but the big news everybody knows. I know we didn't get a chance to talk about it because I would have chimed in because I was pissed off when I heard about the news last week about the A's possible move. Uh, oh that is, yeah, it, yeah. It, it's, it still bothers me. You know, I, I went to my first game in a couple of weeks last night because, you know, as of how the season is and they're kind of recouping for COVID. So prices have gone up. Parking's 30 bucks. Food is back to normal. When we had this thing called A's Access, where it gave you 50% off of 
food, alcohol, your tickets, man, you go buy a 10 game package and you can still go to all 81 games and sit out in the treehouse or the bleachers. But right now it, it talks are talks. I don't give a shit for talks. Yeah. We need to get a deal done. This team has been here since 1968. This team belongs here. How the hell is the city of Oakland going to lose three fucking sports teams in five years? We lost the Raiders. The owner didn't want to be here. He didn't even go fucking sit down. Excuse my language. I'll rant a little bit. He didn't even want to go sit down with the city of Oakland with Ronnie Lott, former Niner Raider, Mm -hmm. Rodney Pete, former Detroit Lion, former Raider quarterback. They had a $1.2 billion set on the table. He didn't even fucking show up for the meeting. <laughs> Did you guys see his attitude in, in 2016 when he was in L.A. when the Rams and the Chargers were trying to jump all in there? All three of those teams were trying to take the L.A. And when he didn't get it and they showed his face, he looked disgruntled <laughs> as all hell. <laughs> so, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, cool. Mm-hmm. So you got what you wanted in Vegas. Good luck. Cool. Now. The Warriors, the Warriors, over 200 consecutive sellouts at the Oakland Arena. And you want to move to San Francisco because you want to jack the prices up? I think one of the owners is from San Francisco. A lot of people are like, dude, it's 20 minutes across the bridge. Bro, I'm Oakland. I'm Oakland. I love San Francisco, but my team is 10 minutes down the damn freeway from where I live. I used to walk five minutes to go to Warriors A's games. Raiders left when I was only five, so I couldn't go on my own. But for years, I went to A's games by myself. For years, I went to Warriors games by myself when they were affordable. They go to San Francisco. A $40 seat is now $85 in Chase Arena. What? Yes. That doesn't shock me. Hey, yeah. and, not only that, and not only this hijacker, too, but, but the fact that Golden State had all those great seasons with Kevin, yes. Durant, you know, with Kevin Durant. Yes. You know, and, you know, they, they lost to LeBron last night. What did he do? Hit a last second shot and beat him 103, yes. 100? Yes. You know, and it, it, it sucks. You know, even though I'm not following him like I was three, four years ago, I still peek at him and I want him to win because, yes, they are still the Bay Area's team. But it just hurts when you have all these good years in Oakland and you leave. All we needed was a stadium. There's plenty of areas to build. It's just the owners didn't want to be here. You know, everybody has right. that facade. It's like, like yeah, it's it's like it's like you're saying about about Golden State. They were they were in Oakland for years up there at Oracle Arena, and they yes. had all that success from 15 to 19. They won they won the majority of those championships. Lost in 16, lost in 19, but they they won in 15, and then in 16 they went they had 73 wins in the regular season 73 and nine the best regular season in the nba in yep. the bay area and then they lose to cleveland in seven games and then they pulled the biggest stupid move of all by signing kevin durant with which they didn't need to do in the first place because oh. kevin durant did not it's like kevin durant sold his soul to satan himself to win an nba championship and golden state did not need him and they had success from 17 to 19, could have won three in a row. They won two in a row. And just because they were having all that success from 15 to 19, they thought, oh, well, we can move the team to San Francisco because the team's going to be successful out there because of the name. No, that's not how it works because you have to have a team put together that can go, that can work together, that can yep. coexist. Yep. If you look at it. But what's up, Johnny? No, I was just going to say, Stephen, going off of what you just said, can't you say the same thing about Durant coming to Brooklyn? Yes. Mm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Realistically, yeah. think about it. Look at, I mean, I know the big talk right now in New York is the Knicks and the Nets both making the, the postseason. And do you know this, by the way, speaking about that, do you know the Knicks sold out for the first round against Atlanta quicker than wow. Brooklyn? Wow. Just think about it. Brooklyn, everybody expected to be in the in the playoffs. I can't tell you one Knicks fan who thought that this team was going to be the number four seed in the East. And I said this two weeks ago. If it's that it comes down to Brooklyn and the Knicks, my money's riding on the Knicks right now. I'm sorry. You have a team right there who nobody expected them to do anything. 
and they are they're doing what they're supposed to do. And quick rant I have. They announced Coach of the Year a couple days ago. I don't know if you guys heard this. And, I did. And they gave it to the Phoenix Suns head coach. What? I'm sorry. It should have gone to Thibodeau. I'm absolutely in your corner, John. It should have gone to Thibodeau. I'm, I'm not in your Does Adam Silver have a screw the Knicks button? Why? Because we made it to the goddamn playoffs? Oh, we can't have the coach of the year? Give me a break. It should that Tom Thibodeau should have freaking won the damn thing. I think it's idiotic he did it. Yes, Phoenix, you know, they made a, a swing. Congratulations. But look at what Tom did with the Knicks. Took a team that hasn't been to the playoffs since 2013 and not only made them, gave them a run, he made them a team that people are expecting are going to make a deep run. Look at Tom Thibodeau also, too, John, to kind of what you're saying. Thibodeau has had a hell of a coaching career with Chicago <laughs> as a defensive coach with the Boston Celtics, helping him win that championship in 2008 against the Lakers. The, yeah. guy, the guy knows his shit. He's not I, a first-time coach. I'll tell you this much. I think he's one of the most underrated coaches right now. I agree. And the fact that you don't give that guy – the, the coach of the year is ridiculous. I am not a Knicks fan. I am far from a Knicks fan. I'm a Celtics fan. Oh, Those I'm a kids. diehard. It, when it comes to but me. But the fact that you don't give that guy coach of the year, it is ridiculous. What I mean, I mean, I'm sorry. At least the Phoenix Suns in the past decade have actually had some okay teams as far as at the beginning of the decade. And, mm-hmm. and they, but the fact that New York for the past 20 plus years has not done nothing for the most part except fail and lose in front of their diehard fan, the fandom, because Madison Square Garden for years was selling out because it was the Mecca of all Meccas in the world of sports. Yeah, but Stephen, you got to understand something. Even when the Knicks had their shitty run and they were the laughing stock of the NBA, Dolan and the Dolan family were still selling out the garden every right. week. Because for a while, you got to understand something. For a while, it wasn't about what was going on on the court. It was, oh, who made it? Who's on Celebrity Row this week? <laughs> and now that they're finally putting on a winning product on the court, all I'm going to tell you is this: if the Eastern Conference Finals comes down to Brooklyn and New York, oh, that you want to talk about an intense series? There you go. You got one team that everybody expects to be there. You got another team that nobody expects to be there. Yeah. I think it's safe to say New York will probably burn something down to the ground after that series. Uh, I definitely think that New York is going to uh, maybe have a bit of a conundrum with that series. But, John, to go in, you know, back on your point of how the you said the Knicks outsold the Nets, right? Yes. So – a, a big reason for that probably is they're the, according to Forbes, the 2021 most valuable sports teams. They're number three. Yeah. Number one is the but, Dallas Cowboys. Number two is the Yankees. The Knicks are number three. And it's but, also Madison Square Garden. It's not called the Mecca for no reason. But Kevin, it's also, it's not even that. Like I said before, look at all the years the Knicks were terrible. And they were still selling out the garden night in and night out. Mm-hmm. That's also why I know there was this whole thing about, you know, that Dolan needs to sell the Knicks. Dolan's never going to sell the team. People go <laughs> to see the Knicks. Madison Square Garden is like, God, sorry. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That yeah it's not Boston the Mecca for Garden, no reason. Boston Gardens, those are the two places that hold two basketball teams that were dominant in the 80s and the 90s. That people will go, it, the team, it's like the Warriors. You can be trash all those years, but you pe- people will still go just to be in that location itself. Mm-hmm. It's almost it's like, simple. here's the best way I can say it. It's almost like, you know how they always say, you know, certain stadiums, like especially in the NFL, the stadium becomes its own player. Like, for example, look at Lambeau Seattle. Field. Or not even Lambo. look at Seattle. Where mm. the Seahawks play. Yep. Well, okay, yeah. another one. Look at Kansas City. Yep. Arrowhead. A lot of times you go to these arenas, you go to these stadiums, 
stadiums, it's not because you want to see the team. It's so that you can sit there and say, well, I was at, you know, Arrowhead Stadium and I was at Lambeau. Because essentially those stadiums become another player on the team. It, it's the no. same like in, uh, in baseball when you go to Wrigley or you go to Fenway or the mm-hmm. old Yankee Stadium or some of these, like just especially Fenway. The first time I ever went, I went to Fenway Park when I was in my 20s for the first time ever. And I felt like I was walking on hallowed ground. Yeah. You know, I, um, I just felt like it was just an, another world. Hold on. Yeah. You, you want to talk about walking on hollow grounds? I got a quick uh, story regarding the Red Sox for you, Kevin. All right. Quick story. Quick story. Quick story time. Quick story. Uh, my, my great-grandfather passed away back in 2015. He was 103. Mm-hmm. He, I mean, he died. He still had all his original hair. He never went white. Yeah. I can tell oh. you other stories about him, but I'll have to wait till after we're off the show. And <laughs> the best story I can tell with him, he was a phenomenal baseball player growing up. He grew up up in the Connecticut area. He was almost drafted by the Boston Red Sox. Wow. Oh, wow. What, he, he would have played, had he accepted the offer, he would have played with Babe Ruth. The only reason why he didn't play he never took the offer. He had to help his mom milk the cow on the farm. Pardon. Yeah. You got to take care of the family business and, and, and what it needs with the family sometimes, man. Yeah, yep. but I always love telling that story because to sit there and think that I could have had a family member been a part of those early Red Sox days. Yeah. Me being a New Yorker and my feelings for Boston, no offense, Kevin. <laughs> None taken since I probably have the same feelings towards New York. Well, yeah, I know my brother's actually, my brother just went up to Boston. Uh, he's going up Monday. Nice. For a couple of days. Cool. Yeah. So, Make sure he doesn't wear any uh, Yankees garb. Oh, no. I told him, I said, I said, whatever you do, I said, do not, you know, wear anything that says you're from New York. Yeah, unless you want to end up in cement shoes at the bottom of the river, you don't, that was just, you not do that. Hey, 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 they don't use the Mystic River anymore. It's too polluted anyway. <laughs> well, well, you, it's, you like, it's like out here, though. Well, stop man. telling John to swim in it. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. okay, let's move on. <laughs> yeah. well, it's kind of like, like you guys were talking about Yankee Stadium and Fenway Park. Out here on the West Coast, you got the Coliseum and you have the old candlestick, which has been torn down in its buildings now. Yeah, those were two staple pieces. And it's like the arena out here, the Cow Palace, the San Francisco Cow Palace. It's like the West Coast version of Madison Square Garden and Boston Garden. We we need a new stadium. I hope we don't play around and lose this baseball team and we need a new stadium. But when you come to the Coliseum, yes, you hear about the problems with the sewage. You hear of problems with the clubhouse, the, the visiting clubhouse backing up. But when you walk into the Coliseum, all you can do is think about is history, dude. whether it's the Raiders or the A's. Championships were won on this field. Mm-hmm. And that goes down in a piece of history right there. It's not like a stadium. Look, look at Fenway. You got Fenway. You got Wrigley Field. Those two stadiums have been around for over 100 years. Yep. Yep. Sometimes I feel we can do that with the Coliseum, but then I'm like, no, we need something new because watching 7,000 fans on a typical night when we should have 27,000 fans, it, it's not the same. Uh, so we have to say good night and we need to bring in the new and it, we need to keep this team in the town. Here's an interesting, uh, as far as historical fields, as far as NFL, how about Soldier Field in Chicago? Yeah. What about you Veterans know, it's Field funny. in Philly where people got injured, damn, their half their career in the 80s and early 90s? I, on I that just turf. thought of something. That's right. I just thought of something. We're all doomed. Thanks, Ezra. Um, we could do an entire episode on historical fields and historical oh, yeah. arenas. Definitely. Yeah. Because realistically, you look at any arena, you look at any stadium, there's always There's that something. one game. Exactly. One I game, mean, one player. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, go to if you look at New York, go to you know Shea Stadium, and the first thing that comes to mind was Piazza's home run after 9/11. Mm-hmm. Oh, that go to, gave me a little bit of chills. Go to oh. Yankee Stadium and look at how many, how many legends. I'm not even saying Hall of Famers, legends. Yeah. Played at the old. I might be talking about the new, the stadium. You know that's been around since '09. I'm talking about the old one. Yeah, you're talking about the one that Babe Ruth built. Exactly. I mean, yeah. look at how many guys. I mean, you got you had guys like Ruth, Gary, Barra, Mantle, DiMaggio, Ford, <laughs> well, Elston Howard. I mean, crap. That was just seven or eight guys I just rattled off in the last thirty seconds. Yeah. Oh, not, yeah. Not to cut you off, but when those stadiums are when they, the new Yankee Stadium. What what is the old location right now where the old Yankee Stadium used to be? Uh, I don't remember where exactly, but I think they I think it's similar to what they did with Candlestick. I think they just put apartments there mm-hmm. right See, now. That's, that's that's what I'm saying. That's the mystique. When we try to keep teams here, whether it's in our lifetime or not, we got to build new stadiums every 30, 40 years, whatever it may be. I don't know if these new arenas and stadiums are building are going to last longer than what was built in the 50s and the 40s and the 60s. But as you notice, teams want a new place to play every 20 to to 25, 30 years, right? Right. So what's going to happen in New York in another 30 years when they say, hey, the Yankees want a new stadium, where are they going to go? Are they they going to run out of room out there for a stadium? Are they going to eventually lose the Yankees at some point in life? If they do that hijacker, that would be past all our life that, at this point. Yeah, that's what I would think. But we're going to run out of room because everybody wants new stadiums. Because I look at it sit there and say, well, shit, if you're going to keep this team for 150, 200 years, why don't you tear down this location, build? All right, when we're done here, we're, we're going to tear the old one down. We're going to rebuild on top of it. And we'll do the same thing in 30 years when we need to hear if that's what the owners and the city and the taxes want to do. Okay, but like I'll t- I'll give you another example. Look at the Islanders right now, who are playing at the Coliseum for the last time. And you think of the Islanders, you don't think of Barclays at all. No, no, you think of the Nassau Coliseum. I think of the Nassau Coliseum. Oh, yeah. yeah, and I know they're set to open up their new state, their new arena uh, next season. I think it's supposed to open up later this year. Yes. Yep, it is later this year because and, it's going to be, because we're quick, it's going to be, as far as the transition of the music for a quick second, Genesis is making their return to the stage this year after 14 years of not touring, and they're going to be playing in the brand new arena that will be finished by the end of this year. Yeah, and I guarantee you this, you, Hijack, going back to what you were saying before about losing teams, I don't know if you guys know the story with the Islanders, the reason why they end up in Barclays is because there was a real, a real thought that the Islanders were going to leave Long Island completely, and I think at one point, if I remember correctly, I think the two possible locations were either going to be Quebec, Canada, the city. Yeah. And oh. they ended up picking Barclays because it's they can still say you know that they're the New York Islanders. Yes, is it a bit of a commute for? People who live out by me, absolutely. But now that they're gonna where they are, they're gonna have their own arena. I think you're gonna see memories made there. But I mean, crap. Look at. I, I think I have an idea for a future episode. It definitely, <laughs> it's a nice idea. Oh, we definitely do. By the way, to answer the question about old Yankee Stadium hijacker. It is currently, um, it was demolished um, starting in twenty in 2009, um, but it is currently called Heritage Field. That's what replaced yeah. old Yankee Stadium. And you can see the new Yankee Stadium from um, Heritage Field. Yeah. So it's just, it's a public well, park. <laughs> well, it's kind of like, excuse me, that's kind of like out here. Uh, the A's want to buy the land where the Coliseum currently is. They want to keep the arena but what they want to do is they want to tear down the Coliseum and they want to turn it into a playground for the kids. They want to keep the field there. 
They want to build about 10 minutes, 10 miles down the freeway in Jack London on the water, which is fine. It's going to be cold as hell because it's already cold as hell on night games before summer yeah. hits. It's going to be even worse then, but that's fine. That's neither here or there. And it's going to take Hijacker an extra 10 minutes in traffic to get to the damn stadium. But as long as he has his own parking spot, that's all good because that's, yeah. that's another – that's another word I heard. We're going to have our own personal parking spots and parking garages if it comes into fruition. Tuition. But I have another question. The Giants and the Jets, yes. they used to play in New Jersey, correct? They still do. They used to yep. – Okay. Giants, Giants used to – it used to be Giants Stadium back in the 70s. The Jets for a couple of seasons shared – uh, the shared Shea Stadium with the Mets. Okay. So they're That's in New also, Jersey, right? The, yes. yes they're both in New Jersey. So how do people of New York take that? Do they find that as a problem saying, hey, you're not New York. You're technically New Jersey because you're playing in New Jersey. Is there? They is don't there care. Any, they don't no, care. Okay. So it's not like out here where the Warriors per se, they're playing 20 minutes across the, um, the Bay Bridge, not the Golden Gate, the Bay Bridge. And people are like, well, dude, they're still in the Bay Area. They're still Bay Area's team. Yeah, they're still Bay Area's team, but they're not in Oakland. They're not in the town where they had 200-plus consecutive sellouts. They won three of five NBA championships they were in consecutively. It, 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 we have love for each other, but when it comes to teams, hey, A's, Giants fans clash. When the Raiders were here, Raiders, Niners fans clash. Another thing, the 49ers are 50 miles down the freeway from San Francisco and Santa Clara. People were pissed when they left San Francisco. Even though people say, hey, too. Yeah, it's only an hour drive down the freeway. I'm like, you idiot. That's an hour drive in traffic. No, no, like, to, no, no like that, but that's taking away history from, from, from yeah. that park. And Candlestick is gone, dude. It's a freaking parking lot with a building. Now, Come people on. got seats. People got pieces of the concrete. People got that stuff. That's the same thing like with me with the Coliseum. When they tear the Coliseum down, I said, hey, when I find out the last game's there, I'm taking chairs home. President of the Oakland A's, Dave Cavill, grew up in Cleveland. When I went and had office hours visit with him two years ago in his office at the Oakland A's headquarters, he showed me two seats in his office that him and his buddies ripped out of the old uh, Indian Stadium. What was that place called? Uh, when it closed before they opened up the new one in 95 or 94, I think it was. Jacob's uh, Field? Municipal or Jacobs Field or something. Yeah, they yes. ripped they yes. ripped seats out of the stadium and took chairs home on the very last day the Indians played in that stadium before they got the new one. So that's how I feel with the Coliseum. Me and my buddy last night, Brian, we were already looking how to pull seats out because he's like, dude, I want four. And I said, dude, I want two. I said, these are going to be my cigar lounge chairs in my backyard when this happens. I don't blame you, brother, because yeah. – if you, if you are a fan of a team that has played at a, at a ball field or a stadium or wherever for so many years, you feel like a piece of your childhood is being ripped away. Oh, yeah. From you. Oh, yeah. Definitely, man. Uh, I was young when the Raiders left in 82. I was only five. I only got to go to two games, which it wasn't a big deal. But when the Warriors left, or when the Raiders came back, it, it, dude, I damn near cried. I was like, okay, we're on now. But then when they started talking leaving, then it was like, all right, dude, whatever. I understand it's a business, but I'm not spending what I would spend on two seats for the season to go to Vegas for one weekend for one game. Mm -mm. That's just too damn much. I go to Vegas to play, gamble, have fun, party, chill with yep. the family, friends. I don't go to watch sports in Vegas. Now, yeah. I know the A's minor league team is out there. Okay, I may hit a game, but I'm, fuck, I already sat out in 107 degrees watching the Nashville Sounds versus uh, the Las Vegas 51s when they were the Mets uh, AAA team two, yeah. uh, three years ago. 107 degrees in the shade with lightning, bro. How does that happen? Come on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's the whole thing is ridiculous. Um, one lesson I would touch on quickly. I don't know if you guys touched on the whole no hitter. Yes. Oh, we did. Sure. We okay. did go and talk um, about that. Only thing I just want to say quickly on that is with Corey Kluber's, they said it was the first time since 1923 that a Yankee pitcher did that on the road. I don't know if you guys heard that wow. stat. Wow. 
And wow, I, I have that. a strong feeling we will see history made this year because I don't have I have a feeling we're going to see a few more no hitters before it's all said and done. Oh, oh absolutely, oh, definitely, man. I I almost yes. got to see one in Oakland a uh, couple weeks ago with Sean Manaya. He he took it into the eighth inning. Did he have a perfect going into the sixth? Yeah, yeah. He, had, he had a perfect going into like the sixth or seventh. Um, yeah. Kevin, Kluber last night, I think, was one walk away from a perfect game. Yeah, no, he, he was one walk away from a perfect. Yeah, and, I tried so guys, hard because, you know, I'm a Red Sox fan. I tried so hard to go and ruin that no hitter. Didn't work. <laughs> did, you, did you guys take note that Seattle's been no hit twice this year? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Now, yeah. That's going to be pretty rough. That's embarrassing to be no hit twice. It's equally, it, it's probably a little more embarrassing the second one because it's a no name pitcher for the Detroit Tigers. In your own house. Yeah. Well, both of them have been in their own house. Oh. I, I'll put it to you this way. Do I think the no hitters now are not, are not special anymore? No, I still think they're special. Despite the fact we've had, I think, 526,000. 300 of them and please tell me somebody got that reference <laughs> please tell me somebody got that reference what you got johnny boy nobody got the wow you know ah! the number? repeat the number again john five hundred twenty i forgot the number now ah, you is, blow it? It. is it five hundred twenty five thousand six hundred Yes. Yeah, of course I get the reference. It's from Rent. Good that somebody got the reference here, unlike my failure earlier. What did you do? Okay. I tried to go and make a reference to Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I talked about the meaning of life, you know, liberty and all things in the universe. The answer to it is 42. Oh. Uh, no, Stephen well, and Ezra just like no sold me hard. Like, what? what? I'm like, oh, come um, on. All my Kevin, friends are going to love that, and you guys let me know. Kevin, I think we should think about maybe hitting the old uh, snoozer at us home, because I think yeah. one of our guys... Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm looking at it now, and... Uh, hey, pass hey, out. Yo, Ezra! Uh, he's, he's out. He's gone. Oh! <laughs> wow! He's nodding. Wake hey. up! It's been a long day. All right. Wow. Wow. Good. wow. First oh, wow. time on the Our Nation Sports Show. Ezra it was bound to happen. And you know what's the weirdest part about it? It happened on a regular night, not the draft. <laughs> you guys were on for like six <laughs> hours on draft. Not the draft. Night, huh? We were on for five and a half freaking hours. Oh, you realize what's going to wow. happen? Wow. Uh, oh. God, but yeah, Kevin, why don't you uh, send us home there? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up uh, tonight. So we don't again, have to ask Ezra his final thoughts because I think his final thoughts um, probably have to go and do with uh, Mr. Sandman. Yeah, Enter the Sandman, <laughs> and the that sand means two things in this case, given his uh, affinity for Lars. Someone, someone call Mariano Rivera to come uh, close him out. No, I told him earlier. I told him earlier he has to go make a sequel to Lulu. <laughs> um, it's going to have to be titled like a uh, Spaceballs Two: The Search for More Money. Uh, let me tell you, um, he is knocked the fuck out. Um, he's he's sitting over there, um, passed out. Um, I think he's had a long fucking day working and and just working his ass off. So um, I think, Kevin, um, you need to close this show out, man. So uh, Ezra, and when you watch this back, man, um, pick the breaking fuck news, up. Breaking news before we what? leave. Uh -oh. The Washington Wizards have clinched the number eight seed after oh. defeating the Indiana Pacers. Wow. Oh, there you go. So what does that do with the Pacers? Pacers are done? They're out. Pacers are done. They're done. Right. Out. But yeah, and Kevin. And speaking of out, Ezra is out. Kevin, let's do final thoughts and call it a night. All right. So let's go and uh, start with, uh, well, I was going to start with Ezra, but uh, yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> Steven, final thoughts. Final thoughts. Somebody might have fell asleep on the show. That's terrific. That's terrific. That's terrific YouTube uh, 
right there, pal. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it was a good show despite the technical difficulties. Um, it was, you know, really cool back and forth banter between all of us. Hijacker, cool stopping in, talking, shooting the shit about sports, Johnny Cakes. Uh, cool, you know, you dropping in, you know, and talking sports. And, oh, my God, just the simple fact that we made it after so many times doing this shit on both the nation show and our nation sports show. Finally, somebody falls asleep on the air. This is terrific. Wait a second. Hold on. This is our Mike Francesa moment. Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, oh, yes. my God. Yes. I wish somebody could get a screen grab of Ezra and then somehow we can get him imposed on Francesa. <laughs> well, it's it's being recorded, so we can grab screen grabs off of it there, buddy. It's yes, being recorded yeah. and we can have fun. <sighs> don't, you, don't you just love I, could you could seriously could you imagine right now if this was legit shoot live? Right now, he would be passed the fuck out on a worldwide you uh, internet audience in front of the whole world, passed out live. And now, <laughs> sorry, Ezra, but even though this was not officially recorded live, sorry, pal, you're going on YouTube, passed out of sleep on Zoom on our nation sports show. Oh my god, he's getting his but own clip. Yes! <laughs> yes! Get yeah. your own clip. But, Kevin, uh, let's finish yeah, up with Final Fox. Like at, at least he's not uh, snoring like a certain band caller. <laughs> and a certain guy in the nation that we love. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, uh, Hijacker, final thoughts from you, sir. Final thoughts jumping in with you. Uh, like I said, Right now, my sports life is on life support with my team behind me here, the Oakland A's. Uh, we got to get something done. They've had talks. Cool. Yeah, you've had 150 talks in the last year or whatever. Uh, let's get this ink on paper and let's start breaking ground. Let's get it done. Let's stop arguing about losing team because you know what? Oakland's not going to be much without a sports team. You're going to lose so many jobs. Man, people are already struggling and scrapping right now because you used to going, you got people working Raider Warrior A's games, Giants games, Sac uh, Stockton Ports games, even Sacramento River Cats games. These guys would travel between all these teams and that's what they would do full time. So uh, Oakland, A's. Let's get a job done. That's my final thought. Let's get this done. I don't want to walk away from a third and final team in the city I was born and raised in. Very good. Uh, I'm, I'm with you. I'd rather have the Oakland A's stay in Oakland. I don't, I don't want to have them become the Las Vegas A's or something like that. No, no. Uh, so, John, final thoughts yeah. from you. Uh, sorry for the mix up earlier today. I take responsibility for that. Um, no, I have a very big thing possibly coming up for me on the horizon that your boy here will maybe starting to grow up a little bit and just final thoughts for me is, you know, continue to love everybody, respect everybody. If you see somebody who isn't really fully there because of everything going on. Lend an ear. Believe me, people need it. Uh, also, support our troops. Uh, support our EMT, fire, frontline workers, essential workers, grocery store workers. We're the ones who you know, who, who have been through this the whole pandemic. And yeah, it'll be nice to be nice to be back in the big boy chair come next week. And yeah, just stay locked into the Our Nation Sports Show Twitter account and Facebook page for all updates and for stuff going further. All right. Thank you, John. Uh, and final thought from me. Uh, the immortal words of famed comic George Carlin. Don't sweat the petty things. Don't pet the sweaty things. That's all I gotta say about that. 
so like john said you can go and follow us on our nation sports show um twitter facebook youtube uh go and hit that subscribe button go and follow go and hit that like button please go and do it especially on youtube once we get to 100 subscribers we're going to have our own custom url uh it'll be great we won't have to again like i said earlier you know youtube.com slash yx double p zero three two four we won't have to go and do something like that you can just go and say youtube.com slash our nation sports show but until then, just keep hitting that subscribe button and let's get it going. So for everybody here, as I uh, go and get everything set up to end this glorious night. Okay, Bobby Rude. Uh, well, if you want to call it that kind of glorious. Okay, so for Steven, for Hijacker, for John, and for Sleepy. <laughs> this is Terrific. Not John Flame. <laughs> Terrific. <laughs> That's a good one. Pat myself on the back for that one. Oh, Very hard with style. So, As a everybody run, here at our Nation Sports Show, we bid you a fantastic evening. Be here next week, 7 p.m. East, and I hope you guys have a pleasant tomorrow.